Oh, there we go. Oh, we have, uh, there we go. All right. We're here. Hill Peyton in the chat, Justin in the chat. What is up, everybody? How's it going? Welcome to the well. Zero Labs first live stream. There we go. First live stream. We're waiting on card reveals right now for the translations. But to start, we figured we'd talk a little bit about what has been revealed so far as of today with some of the Ogre Ponds. Uh, does anyone want to make the first comment or yeah. any comment on the grass one? Yeah, I'm pulling it up now. Uh, the Pokey Beach article. Um, give me one sec. Yeah, there we go. All right, Twilight Masquerade officially revealed for our May set. So that's going to be NAIC, which I think we all sort of thought we weren't going to get um like a a set for so it's kind of nice to know that we are getting that um yeah very cool for sure to have it, it's super hype having a new set before an ic yeah yeah it makes it way more fun for sure um so looking through here, I think the main cards revealed were really just the Ogre Ponds, which makes sense. But this set is going to be made up of Crimson Haze, which is what we are live streaming tonight. The card reveal should start here in like 15, 20 minutes. Maybe maybe it's 11 p.m., but hopefully earlier. Uh, but we'll get the whole Crimson Haze set revealed tonight that we want to review and take a look at the translations as they start coming in from Tuan and Pokey Beach and all the great people on Twitter who you know, translate the cards as they come out. But for now we have uh, the Ogre Ponds, which I think are going to be pretty cool. Um, some people are more hype on them than others, but uh, we have four of them, all four different types, all Terra EXs, all with the same Terra thing, which I was kind of hoping Ogre Pond would be the start of them changing how they do the Terra stuff, but um, maybe that'll be with the stellar Terra type that we know is coming in August. For yeah, first... it'd be cool. It'd be cool if we had some other other effects on these Terra abilities. <clears throat> yeah, but the first uh, the first Ogre Pawn is the Grass one. The Teal Dance ability. They all have okay. So the first thing to note is they all have two hundred and ten HP and they all have one retreat cost, which is pretty low HP if you're comparing it to uh oh. I think we lost Austin. Um, let me just check that that doesn't mess up. Austin's internet went down. So, oh, no. Right, let me fix our layout here. Well, Austin will be back shortly, and our layout will get fixed <laughs> as we go. Um, but, yeah, this Grass Ogre Pond has the Teal Dance ability. Once during your turn, you may attach a basic Grass Energy card from your hand to this Pokemon. If you attach energy to a Pokemon in this way, draw a card. And then it has the Myriad Leaf Shower Attack. Three Grass, 30 plus 30 more damage for each energy attached to both active Pokemon. So, basically, as soon as this is powered up with three energy on it uh facing down a charizard that has two energy on it you know it can one shot a charizard and i think that's probably the main purpose of this card aside from the fact that like it's a small sort of draw engine in the deck it powers up your other attackers a little bit and we'll get to that as we go through the cards um so it, it's kind of the main engine of the deck but it's probably really only useful into things like roaring moon and charizard I think it's always nice when like one of your main Pokemon has without how popular Charizard is likely going to be post rotation. Uh, this seems like a pretty good attacker for an Ogre Pond deck. Uh, and it's always nice having 
draw power on one of your main attackers. Uh, it just helps up the consistency of any deck. Uh, drawing one card isn't like the strongest draw ability, but like it's it's something. Energy acceleration and draw and, like on the same ability is like it's like not bad. Shadow Rider was very good for a little while, uh, so yeah, kind of a similar ability. Attaches can it only attaches to itself though. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Um, but I think before we look at the other cards, we'll go to the trainer card that seems to be sort of what would make the deck run if you were to run the ogre pawns all together and it's this item card called ogre's mask choose a pokemon ex in your discard pile that has ogre pawn in its name and switch it with one of your pokemon ex in play that has ogre pawn in its name any attached cards damage counters special conditions turns in play and any other effects remain on the new pokemon so like the way that i see it is you start to get energy on the grass type ogre pawn and then you can switch it out for one of the other types of ogre pawn to hit into a specific weakness or whatever matchup that you're really looking at. Um, so if we look at each of the other Ogre Pawns here, they all have an attack for a colored energy of their type. So fire, fighting, and water, and then two colorless energies. So the idea is like those two colorless energies could be powered up by the grass type Ogre Pawn before you switch it out with the item card into whatever type of Ogre Pawn you want to look at. And I think yeah. the, the best one maybe to start with is the cornerstone mask ogre pawn ex um it literally is just a little in vulpix v stars attack as an ability and so it doesn't have to evolve it doesn't have to attack even if you switch it out to the bench and switch it back to the active it still can't be attacked by poke by your opponent's pokemon that have an ability and there's no path in the current format uh like i don't know this just seems like really good and the current way Goldengo, Chimpao, Charizard decks are built going into Temporal Forces, um, they just lose to this card the minute it enters play. So they're going to have to do something different as soon as this card is legal, I think. Yeah, Cornerstone stance like right away when I read this ability. I'm like, yeah, that's that's pretty broken. It's a good ability. Yeah. Um, I think it's worth noting that while the Demolish does have Shred, has also a kind of unfortunate effect too where it, its damage is not affected by weakness so demolish cannot one shot uh like an arceus v star or an iron hands ex uh which i guess makes sense i think uh if this card was able to one shot iron hands ex that would make it like an extremely extremely powerful card yeah yeah that's fair i i would still like for it to be able to i think that wouldn't make it that overpowered personally sometimes they put like these limitations on cards where it's like yeah it would be better if it didn't have that limitation but it wouldn't be absolutely broken if it didn't have that limitation that's and true that's probably one of these things where i don't think anyone really hates the idea of certain cards like being good counters to iron hands because nobody really wants that ruling the meta i don't think not yeah, that I guess it will so but something kind of interesting like in a deck like this that like can like it has the ogre's mask to like allow you to swap between your different ogre ponds and you have different type coverage on each of your ogre ponds. You don't actually have like that much type coverage uh, because the fighting, like you don't actually have fighting coverage if you're not hitting for weakness. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and the grass ogre pond doesn't do, like it. Ha it does hit weakness for Charizard. Yeah. That's like pretty relevant. Uh, and the uh, we'll get to the water and the fire ones in a second, but uh, the water one like also like its main attack doesn't hit that hard, so mm -hmm. like your water coverage like isn't super relevant either. So I think uh, maybe we'll see, like. So I don't I don't know if this is like really much of like a type coverage deck is like I've seen a little bit of on Twitter people saying it's like a coverage deck. I don't really see it that way as much. It, yeah. Like the attackers are different things, but it's not because of the typing. Yeah, I agree with that. And we uh, just a shout out to Peyton and Sam in the chat. What's going on guys? Good to see you. Um yeah, I think I think you're right. I don't think this is like a weakness box deck the way that maybe some people sort of thought of it as. Um because these cards aside from the grass one like you said aren't really targeting weakness on things. This one is like, this one's targeting decks with abilities and saying, okay, I have an attacker that you can't hit into, essentially. I'm going to try to win the game by sort of controlling the game 
by not letting your best attackers with abilities attack me. And then the grass one, like you said, that's kind of, it's kind of the draw engine of the deck. It's the energy acceleration of the deck. And then it's sort of the deck's way to beat things like Charizard and Roaring Moon. And then we have the fire one that we'll get to now with the Wrathful Hearth attack. This attack does 20 damage for each damage counter on this Pokemon. Um, so it could be kind of like uh, a way if you're going up against, for example, like... Um, future box or something where they're going to like attack into you first with the Maridon to, to, you know, get some energy acceleration going. So it's not, it's, it's maybe more for decks that aren't going to one shot you. Um, and then you can kind of have this revenge attack, but with only 210 HP, that just doesn't seem all that good. Um, yeah. cause you have to assume you're going to be one shot and unless they get some sort of special energy, I don't see the second attack actually being able to be used in the ogre pond deck uh which is the way that it would hit 280 against evolutions yeah maybe an interesting combo like to be noted not that i think it's like terribly good but we did just have that new a spec revealed the the um the focus sash type a spec yeah so you know you, you could do something like attach that to your your fire ogre, ogre pond it survives and then you swing back pretty hard with the wrathful hearth mm-hmm all right, looks like Austin's hopping back in here. Let me just get a couple things fixed on our layout. But yeah, do you want to talk about the uh, the water ogre pond? Yeah. So uh, lastly, we have uh, the the Wellspring Mask Ogre Pond EX. Uh, its first attack is Sob for one colorless. It does twenty damage during your opponent's next turn. The defending Pokemon can't retreat. Uh, this kind of effect is always kind of a nice like like extra little tool to have in a deck. Uh, we've seen this kind of attack be pretty successful um, on like Mawile or similar types of cards. Sometimes uh, your opponent just straight up can't beat that attack. You know, you attach like a double turbo onto it. So you're doing zero damage. You can just like infinitely trap something. Uh, so uh, it can be situationally useful, but the coolest attack of the Ogre Ponds revealed today is definitely Torrential Pump. Uh, for water, colorless, colorless, it does 100 damage. And you may shuffle three energy attached to this Pokemon into your deck. If you do, this attack also does 120 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Uh, so right away when I read this, uh, 120 damage, uh, B-Barrel has 120 health. Uh, Radiant Greninja is such a strong attacker in the format, but one of its downsides is... With the Bidoof from Crown Zenith that has Carefree Countenance, you can't actually, like, KO, like, uh, a Bidoof mm -hmm. when it's on the bench with Radiant Greninja. And then when they evolve it up into the B-Barrel, it has 120 HP and the 90 damage isn't going to get there. Yeah. Uh, Wellspring, Ma Wellspring Mask Ogre Pond can do 120 to the bench, so... You have plenty of options, like if you're able to like boss up Manaphy and canceling Cologne, you can KO Manaphy and KO B Barrel. Uh, if you're like playing against a deck that does have Manaphy down and they have two B Barrels down, you have options like uh, bossing up a B Barrel, attaching something like a Defiance Band or mm -hmm. something, and you're able to kill two B Barrels in one attack. That's like extremely strong B Barrel, especially post rotation. Mm -hmm. Um, I expect to just be one of the like most played support Pokemon in the format. Especially with so, Unfair Stamp coming out in this same set. Especially with Unfair yeah. Stamp coming out in the same set. Good call out. Uh, yeah. it's, it'll be pretty important being able to deal with, with B-Barrels uh, in order to stop your opponent from getting the cards they need to win a game. Uh, so I think this, this attack is extremely, extremely strong. It's kind of like uh, uh, Urshifu VMAX's Rapid Strike Flow. Uh, at home yeah uh, it does yeah. only 100 damage to the active but i think that's fine i think 120 to the bench is like gonna just be very relevant so yeah. very cool attack i think this is like yeah a very cool card the sob attack is we've also seen those sorts of attacks be very good in the current standard format with mawile just a lot of decks not playing uh, you know enough switching cards that you can lock something active for a little bit as you set up. And then if you sob for a couple turns against certain things like Babarrels that can't really attack, like you could sob against one Babarrel and then Torrential Pump it plus the other Babarrel on the bench and combine that with an Iono or an Unfair Stamp or something like that. There's a lot of things that you can do with this card that I didn't really think about when it was first revealed. 
um, I was just like, okay, that's kind of a cool sniping attacker. And yeah, the fact that it shuffles the energy back into the deck instead of discarding it is, depending on the deck, pretty good. Yeah, and you but, know, one thing I realized we didn't even mention, you know, Tom, I wanted to ask you, what does Ogre's Mask remind you of? Wait, oh man, I know this. It's maybe your favorite supporter card of all time. It it sure could be. It is Item Thornton. Yeah. How cool is that? That's pretty cool. It's, it's pretty, pretty cool. It's pretty cool. That's definitely it's definitely calling my name a little bit. Yeah. It does look like that. That's actually super interesting. <laughs> I also, just I'm sorry I was gone there. I my internet here at home is uh running on some something. I don't know what happened there, but I'm back. I'll Glad to be back here. Welcome All good. back. Welcome back. Yeah, and then um I don't know. It's just really cool to ha to have the idea of this deck be switching between all these different ogre pawns. Of course, all of these ogre pawn cards have different names, so you can actually play play four of each of them in the deck. So you can play just like twelve ogre pawns in a deck. That's probably not how it will be built, but you can do that. Or sorry, sixteen ogre pawns plus whichever ones don't have a rule box because we did get a single prize teal mask ogre pawn, um, which seems not very good uh it has the ogre comeback attack 20 plus 20 more damage for each of your opponent's bench pokemon uh it funny enough is like okay so the first thing i thought about or one of the first things i, I thought about oh what's up sam this set comes out in may i think it's may 22nd so it's just barely legal for naic in june uh, or maybe may 24th i think i got that date wrong i think it's may 24th um but one of the things I was thinking about when this these cards were revealed is the Ogre Pond Mirror Match immediately looks hilarious <laughs> because the fighting type uh, is hit for weakness by grass, but the grass type Ogre Pond has an ability, so it can't hit the fighting type Ogre Pond. <laughs> and then they revealed this Teal Mask Ogre Pond, so you could technically use this in the Mirror Match to hit the fighting type Ogre Pond for weakness. And the fighting yeah. type Ogre Pond also does the most damage of any of them. Uh, just, or sorry, of any of the ones that doesn't have an ability. Um, so like the fire and the water do less damage than the fighting. So the fighting type can two-shot the fire and the water. Um, but they can't one-shot it back. Although I guess the fire one can once you hit into it. Um, so the Ogre yeah. Pond mirror match is going to be crazy. People are going to be Ogres masking things in and out of the active like crazy. Like yeah, I just envision uh, the, the sickest stream matches of all time. Can't fill your bench, or you'll get hit with that ogre comeback. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. pretty exciting uh, stuff. I was always I was very curious how they were going to handle ogre pond. I think there was theories that there was going to be like a specs were going to be the different masks, mm -hmm. uh, or just straight up like regular tool cards were going to be the masks. I think the way they did it makes a lot of sense. Very cool being able to play. Uh, more than four copies of Ogre Pond in your deck. That uh, I think that's the way. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think very it definitely... elegant solution to the the problem. I think, and seems like deck building could be a lot of fun, depending on kind of the energy acceleration we're going to have for these things. Yeah, yeah, I think the first couple of cards we've seen from the set, because as we've seen um, the Ursa, the Blood Moon Ursa Luna and a couple other A specs. We, the cards we've seen so far have been very, very strong. So I foresee this set being pretty, pretty yeah. extremely impactful. So we got a little bit more information about the set as well. So it's going to be 167 cards before Secret Rares, six A spec, trainer, and special energy cards. And we haven't seen a special energy revealed yet as an A spec in this set. Obviously, we have the Neo Upper Energy. Um, so people have been throwing theories around that maybe Ogre Pond will get a special energy specific A spec for uh, for that deck to help it function and power up all those attackers. Um, but there's going to be six A spec totals and I th total, and I think we've only seen two so far, which would be the Unfair Stamp and the, I guess the Focus Sash. I don't remember what it was called, but are those the only two that we've seen so far? I believe that's correct. Okay. Yeah, sounds right to me. And then we have seven Pokemon EX including Blood Moon, Earth, Luna, Screamtail, Iron Thorns, which we've seen revealed already. Uh, but then they call out Sinischa, uh, which is one that we'll see tonight with the Crimson Haze reveal. 
and then three other unrevealed ones. Um, then seven Terra Pokemon Mag Cargo we've seen. Greninja we'll see tonight. Dragapult uh, might not come until the next set. I don't think Dragapult is in the Crimson Haze set, so it'll be in the April's Mask of Change set for Japan. And then the four Ogre Pony X. 21 illustration rares, 11 special illustration rare Pokemon and supporters, six gold cards, and then more than 30 trainer cards, it says. So, yeah, I think this is going to be a very cool set for NAIC. Um, there's also a weird note here that says, our English set will also see the debut of Okie Dogie, Monkey Dory, and Pheasantipity, which were the loyal three Pokemon from the first DLC of Scarlet and Violet. And... Um, the Japanese set Night Wanderer comes out after our set, but was supposed to be the first set I think that these came out in. So I don't know if we're getting the EXs early. I don't know what it sounds like to me. If we're getting the EXs early in our set and before Japan gets them, or if we're getting a non-EX version of them and then their EXs will come out in the next set. I don't know. I was kind of confused by that, though. It could be another kind of situation where, uh, with, with what happened with uh, Obsidian Flame and 151, where we got uh, Obsidian Flame like a little bit before Japan or the same weekend as Japan. Our pre releases got... were before their set actually came yes, out. Yeah. That's right. So it could be another kind of one of those situations, uh, is what it seems like. Yeah. Um, and, you know, speaking of the special energy, uh, new special energy being the set, we also did see. Uh, boomerang energy get yeah revealed yesterday if we want to talk a little bit yeah about that i can one. pull that up here boomerang energy so as long as this card is attached to a pokemon it provides colorless energy and if this card is discarded by the effect of an attack used by the pokemon this card is attached to attach this card from your discard pile to that pokemon after attacking um the first thought is that would have gone pretty hard in rapid strike urshifu <laughs> we got very hard very yeah. Glad that did not exist uh, in this format. Uh, <laughs> this card is very similar to an old uh, special energy that we had a long time ago called Recycle Energy. That energy was pretty cool. Uh, and it was also one of my favorite. It's one of my the Recycle Energy was one of my favorite card arts in the game. I don't know why I liked it so much, but I thought it was a cool looking, cool looking special energy card. That uh, card went hard in the Sun and Moon days uh, it, if you were playing Malamar. Oh, that's very, right. The Recycle. Very yeah. good very good card uh yeah right away i was thinking about like one of the best applications for this card i think there'll likely be some kind of pokemon that combos very well with boomerang energy mm -hmm. in crimson haze uh but as for cards we have right now uh radiant greninja could be something if you attach a boomerang energy onto radiant greninja you could theoretically um just need one less attachment to get it powered yeah. on the next turn which is pretty cool. You just would need like uh, an attachment from a hand if they don't care your Greninja. And secondly, uh, there's Galissapod EX, which is kind of an interesting card. Uh, it's a hit and run style attacker. Uh, I believe it hits for water, colorless, colorless, or water, water, colorless. I think it's water, colorless, colorless. Uh, yeah, and it, it does 170 right. damage, and then you switch with one of your bench Pokemon. Uh, there's a lot of very strong walls in the format right now. We have Mimikyu EX. Uh, we have Klefki. Uh, we have the Fluttermane from Temporal Forces. Uh, but we don't really have a very good... There hasn't really been a very successful like hit-and-run card. Uh, but I th it, the the attack on the Galissapod EX is kind of awkward because you have to discard an energy to use the attack. Mm -hmm. uh, so it can be kind of difficult to keep... Uh, to keep chaining attacks but i think that could be something that we might see could be an interesting combo uh i think hit and run style decks are pretty cool mm -hmm. uh, so i'd like to see something come from that but that was just those were the two cards that immediately came to mind when i was reading boomerang energy does does yeah. raging bolt do anything or is it only basic energies that you it has to be basic it? energy Dang. yeah basic energies that would have been so sick yeah that would have been super interesting but probably good that there's that limitation on there. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, that's super cool. 
Um, I think there were a couple other cards revealed from Crimson Haze that we didn't fully talk about on last week's podcast. So there's the Survival Cast, which we've mentioned a couple of times on here. It's a Pokemon tool. It's an A-spec. Um, if the Pokemon this card is attached to has full HP and would be knocked out by damage from an attack from your opponent's Pokemon, that Pokemon is not knocked out and its remaining HP becomes 10. Then discard this card. Um, Interesting, yeah. So I think like the first thing that most people would think about is maybe some sort of controlling archetype um, or something like the new Blood Moon Earth Luna that's coming out in this set. Just making a tanky Pokemon even tankier. Uh, and you can, especially with basic Pokemon, you could loop the... Well, you could like pick them up with Penny. You can't loop this necessarily. Uh, you'd have to find a way to recycle the tool because it does discard itself. Um, but you could heal off the damage with a penny or something like that um, after you survived a, a hit. My only problem with this is I just generally don't like tool A specs because of Lost Vacuum being in the format. I think it just feels like a good way to sort of waste your A spec because you're, it's not doing something for you on your turn. You're hoping it does something for you on your opponent's turn if they can't do something about it. And that just might mean that you get no value out of your A spec because they are in for a lost vacuum and it's gone. Um, yeah, it's a, it's right. a defensive tool rather than a proactive yeah. tool. Yeah, right. I think the only exception to that is, at least that we're currently aware of right now, is probably going to be Guardy with being able to utilize the plus 100 HP uh, A spec, mm -hmm. where that is used a little bit more offensively, but otherwise you're right. It's yeah. pretty defensive. You and, have to wait for your opponent's turn to get value. Yeah. Yeah, like like you said, you're using that cape offensively in Guardi because it's allowing your attackers to do more damage. Same way that the Maximum Belt is still pretty proactive in decks that are going to use that A spec because it's boosting your damage on that turn. So you are getting some sort of value out of it, even if it's gone on your next turn. Um, whereas this is purely defensive. You're hoping that it does something for you on your following turn. Yeah, I think if if you know if there's some way to easily recycle this, we have Roseanne's backup which would allow you to shuffle it back into your deck. Yeah. Uh, but there's there's just not really any, like, good way to, like, loop it, like, every turn. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe there'll be, like, maybe there'll be some kind of Pokemon that comes out that... We, we've been seeing, I guess, more and more um, cards that do have an, an effect if you have 30 HP or less remaining on your Pokemon, uh, such as we have that Bianca supporter that full heals if you have 30 HP or less. Yeah, uh, we have that uh, the emergency board that uh, it reduces one retreat cost from the Pokemon it's attached to, but if it has thirty HP or less remaining, it gives it free retreat. Mm -hmm. So we've been starting to see some more effects, kind of like that. So it wouldn't surprise me if we were to get a few more types of those kinds of cards in this yeah. set that would combo with the survival cast nicely. Yeah, and Peyton in the chat saying right now the only decks playing Lost Vacuum seem to be Zard, and that's true. I do think that. There might be an argument to be made in some other decks to consider Vacuum. It's harder to now because you don't really care about Path. Path is gone in the next format. So Zard is playing um, a Lost Vacuum. But I think that there are certain decks that might want to play that Vacuum for things like uh, the Heavy Baton on the Turbo Iron Hands decks. You want to get rid of that. Um, you want to probably get rid of the Maximum Belt against Charizard if you're a deck that can't one-shot a Charizard. Uh, at least early on, you want to get rid of that belt so that if you can't one-shot them, they can't get that plus damage back again. You want to get rid of the capes against things like control. So I think there are arguments for other decks to be playing vacuum. It's probably more about deck space that other decks aren't playing it. Um, but yeah, most of the decks right now playing vacuum are just are just hard. That's true. Yeah, I, I, think... I do think vacuum is a card that, like like you were saying, there's there's so many things that you still want to vacuum next format, even with Path gone, that I could actually see vacuum being played more than it is in this format. Yeah. I, it wouldn't be something that would totally surprise me. Yeah, I think um, a huge part of it is going to be how many of these uh, tool card A specs turn into the dominant cards that decks are running. Because if they're, if the majority of decks are running one of these as their A spec over um, one of the Insta playables and things like that, then yeah, I think we'll be seeing the lost vacuum go up by quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. 
I do think an interesting thing too uh, about that is a lot of the Zard decks seem to have been pivoting from the maximum belt back to the prime catcher. And I don't know how I feel about that because they already play like one to two counter catchers in like three bosses orders. And they have so much gusting in the deck and obviously it's good to have a switching effect along with the prime catcher because you want to get out of your barrels and that sort of thing if they get gusted up. Um, or just switch out of your Radiant Charizard if if it, you know, survived for some reason after you used it. I don't know. The the maximum belt just seems so good. Like the minute Ogre, or Ogre Pond, the minute uh, Goldango takes one prize, you can Oko Goldangos with Charizard EX and the, the maximum belt. Um, before the game even starts, you can KO a Champau EX before they've ever taken a prize and you can take the first two prizes in that game and i that's probably the only way you win that matchup if champau sets up is taking the first two prizes um so i don't know i think that there's an argument to be made in charizard decks to stick with the maximum belt um there's probably even other decks that i'm not really thinking about that the maximum belt still helps against uh turbo iron hands probably isn't an issue because they'll take a prize and by the time they've taken a prize or two you can start one shotting the um the iron hands and even if you can't you can one shot the iron crowns from the start of the game because they're dark type but i don't know i think maximum belt is very good in charizard I, and probably what i would play if i played charizard for now i just feel like the deck has enough gusting options and the prime catcher is played because it's a gust and a switch and i get that um but just play gengar right <laughs> From what I'm seeing, <laughs> play the Gengar. The answer is never just play Gengar. No, from, from what I'm seeing, uh, is that the B barrel lists are the ones that are typically leaning towards that prime catcher. Like you were saying, it makes sense to have an extra switch for them. Mm -hmm. But the Pidgeot version of Charizard is still, I think, more uh, tending to lean towards that maximum belt inclusion. Yeah. And Omnipoke actually put out a really good video this week where they were going over like uh, the the most common inclusions of cards and decks. So they were looking at, you know, here's the main 58 cards that people in Japan are playing in these decks. So um, I would definitely take a look at that if you're interested, um, people watching this, go take a look at Omnipoke's video on that because they were showing, you know, what's the most common ace spec decks, what's the most common counts of things like barrels and all that sort of stuff in, in the most popular decks right now. And that was really good. Yeah, super super informative video for sure. I'm a big fan of the Omnipoke channel. Austin has a great Omnipoke impression too. Oh, no. <laughs> we won't make you do it here. It's okay. I was All gonna right. say I haven't I haven't practiced it recently, so give me a, give me a week. <laughs> so just checking Twitter here. It doesn't look like reveals have necessarily started yet. Um, but Tuan said he'd be up at 5 a.m. and it is now 5 a.m. where Tuan lives. So he, he actually replied to a tweet like six minutes ago saying that the reveals are going to happen in about four minutes. Okay. So he actually might be part way through translating the first card. Okay. That is what it. we like to hear. I'm going to just keep refreshing until it pops up. Um, if anyone in the chat knows where the website is that reveals the cards, that would be cool too because we could at least hop in there and start looking at the artworks and stuff. Um, but I don't know where you would even attempt to find that. Yeah. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not There's sure no way Justin Basil would have that stuff up yet. Right. No, I don't I think know. He Justin's pretty quick Pokey Beach, uh, to get the translations up on Pokey beach. Yeah. Like right away when the stuff comes out. Yeah, pretty pretty exciting stuff. Uh, I know Temporal Forces was a little less impactful overall in terms of Pokemon uh, that were coming out. Uh, so I think it'll be it would be cool if some of these EXs are like a little bit stronger this time around. The Temporal Forces mostly was hyped because of the ace specs but so, some of the pokemon were good the iron crown's good yeah. uh the iron leaves pretty good no leaks but the dunsparce is underrated dunsparce is underrated so uh, guys we could pull up justin basil's site he's got uh 
at least some of the card artwork and stuff like that. It's not oh, really? fully updated yet, but. Okay, let me take a look. I found like the Pokemon Japan website, but it's ironically all in Japanese, so I'm I'm having trouble finding things. <laughs> but uh, it looks like I don't think it, I don't know if it's been fully revealed yet. But I'll pull up uh, Justin Basil. Yeah, it's definitely not fully. Everything's not fully up, but there's a few artworks I'm not sure if we've uh, if we've looked at or talked about. Specifically, there's a Blood Moon Ursa Luna alt art on here that looks sick. Looks sick? <laughs> Absolutely sick. Like, needs to go to the hospital. Yeah, let me pull that up because that is a very cool card. Dang, he's got the whole set list. He's, like, filling it in as he goes. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. The Blood Moon Ursa Luna... Oh yeah, that's a that's a nice looking card. Isn't that just incredible? Too bad oh, I'm there never going to have that in a deck. What do you mean, bro? You'll you'll pull it easy. You think I'll pull Jeez. it? Yeah, you'll pull it at pre release. It'll be your first pack. Dude, my <laughs> you do not have any idea of how bad my pull rates at pull releases are. <laughs> <laughs> like literally i i have all the pre-releases i've been to since the start of scarlet and violet you want to know the exact one hit that i've ever gotten is what is it well i guess it was two i got two it was both during the scarlet and violet base set one of them was arcanine arcanine ex and then i got a full art of the one that uh shuffles your hand into your deck and draws eight cards and then ends your turn those were the last hits that I've gotten that have released. That's wild. I forgot about the Infernape. I'm a believer. I, I'm actually not really that big of a believer, but I want to be a believer. What does it do? Do we know yet? Accelerate some energy. Yeah, oh, it is... Uh, once during your turn, you may attach a basic fire, a basic fighting, or one of each from your hand to your Pokemon in any way you like. Okay. And I don't remember... Why did I like this card? What did I say that this paired with when it got revealed? Uh, gosh, I don't remember. I was hyped on something. There's no way it's good, though. <laughs> it's a stage two. Yeah, there, it was similar to that uh, Colossal. It was yeah. a Colossal that did something similar, but I think it was from the discard. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like... Maybe if I was thinking about it with the raging neck. I oh don't know. sure, yeah. If if you want fire energy acceleration, we just have Charizard. You know, like that that does that the job so yeah. well already. Yo, this can accelerate your fighting energy for Garganackle though. <laughs> two right, stage two. Two stage twos. Yeah. The question is, when are we gonna get Garganackle? <laughs> It'll be in a box soon. Read the top right, Tom. Top left, or whatever. It says stage two. Okay, Jack. <laughs> For everyone to be aware, Jack's most hyped deck going to the next format is Chi and Pao, which also seems to feature a stage two. <laughs> that's true. Uh, that's kind of apples to oranges, though, if we're being honest. That's right? Yeah, that's true. Apples Infernape doesn't have Irida. Yeah, there's no Irida. <laughs> What's this walking wake to? Nothing good. Okay. There was like some trainer cards I mean, that I feel like I haven't talked about. I don't know. The, being able to hit, what I will say about the Walking Wake is being able to hit for 180 for three energy on a single prizer. Pretty decent. What, what's that one do again? You can put up to nine damage counters on itself, and then it swings for 20 times the number of damage counters placed. Oh, dude, you just got to play that with uh, with the emergency jelly. You could do that. You could. But there's also the caretaker. Draw two cards. Then if community center is in play, shuffle caretaker back into your deck. Oh, so busted. <laughs> it could have said anything else. It, it could have drew three? It, and he can't even draw three. And then community center is just... Uh, 
what is it what is that it's the world stadium that everyone's freaking out about i can't even remember the name right now oh champions festival. champions festival it's just champions festival if you played a supporter card you don't have to have yeah. your bench full as which i think champions festivals text is you have to have your bench full what do you um, guys think of this uh more peco or peco once during your turn its ability snack search once during your turn you can look at the top card of your deck you can discard it. I mean, we have that ability on a stadium right now, but stadium could poopy. double. What's that? The stadium's poopy. The, yeah, but you could double up, right? You could double up. You yeah. can turbo. You could turbo through your deck for, if you wanted to <laughs> discard primordial cards. altar and play like three more picos. Just discard four cards a turn, and then you'll just always know if it's sick or not. Right. <laughs> You can also just, you know, play it in Lugia. The funniest thing about Lugia is I, f I swear they play they printed Primordial Altar to be played in Lugia. And they were like, you can discard your Archaeops with this. And everyone was like, no, we'll just use Evolution Incense and Ultra Ball. <laughs> everyone was like, what Arceus? You mean all the special energy that I keep looking at? <laughs> I just want to say shout out to the dude at NAIC who Pokey stopped an Archaeops away to get the turn two Archaeops off. Yeah, that's and it was his sick. bulky stop. It wasn't mine. That's uh, you know we didn't talk about uh, Lana's assistance, which is a new supporter that's card right. they revealed yeah, a couple me, days ago. Let me go down to the trainers here. Yeah, Lana's Lana's assistance or Lana's care put up to three in any combination of Pokemon that don't have a rule box, and basic energy cards from your discard pile into your hand. So it's Clara that can't get back Radiant Charizard. Sadly. Which was kind of Clara's purpose. In, in <laughs> yeah, yeah. So a little sad. Yeah. <clears throat> I was thinking about what decks might want to play this card, and I really couldn't come up with anything too, too relevant, I don't think. Espathra? <laughs> I don't know. No, they already have, they have the tulip. They have Tulip already. Yeah, yeah. I think it's yeah. four. Espathra's got Tulip. I think Although it's it very good that this said no rule boxes, though, because that would have been so easy to recycle the Blood Moon or Saluna. Right. I I agree. I think this is probably smart. <laughs> but then, like you said, Max, I'm not sure what we're grabbing with this, but I'm sure we'll find something. Clara wasn't really played when it first came out, was it? Maybe a little bit. I don't know. A little bit, I guess. I, I, it, I, I mean... You can grab Sableyes and Cramorants and Psychic Energies. Yeah. Like, I guess that's better than Tulip in Lost Box yeah. style decks. Yeah. Being able to so bring back Cram now problem. that there's the, the Crisis Punch, too, is pretty good. That's true. Right. I don't think it's a bad card. I don't know if it's found with our current understanding of what the decks are. I don't know if it has a home yet. But this card will see some play at some point yeah i think most most decks are pretty happy just playing like super rods they did print one of the worst ball search <laughs> they did i was the just love going ball. to say why I thinking about love this card ball. sucks so much it's maybe it literally be couldn't a, be uh, worse maybe they're expecting the Blood Moon Ursa Luna meta to just completely take over <laughs> and Love Ball becomes an incredible <laughs> card. Just search search your deck for your Blood Moon Ursa Luna. <laughs> oh, Peyton, Tuan said, uh, the site is under maintenance and we'll be back up soon. Thank you for that. That's good to know. That is a good update. Sam, the Manaphy art is sick. Let me see if I can find it on here. This is not where the art is. Uh, let's see. Visual set list. Oh, the Fione. Oh, it's a Fione. Yeah. 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 Look at that. Thing. Yeah, that's that's a good looking card. All the whale, the whale lords. Yeah, that is so cool. That's pretty cool. It's too bad it's not the Fione from, uh, what was the set that had ADP in it? That oh, was a good card. That was oh. a good card. That was the it was the whirlpool suction, right? Yeah. That yeah. was a good card. That was an annoying card. Look at this Cramorant, yeah. too. That's cool. I can't think of that set name. Oh, ah, it's like right on the tip of my I toes. know. I know. I don't know why I can't remember it. I think we all blacked out ADP days. God. Yeah, those are dark times. 
dark times. Let's hope they don't reveal something like that. I really don't think they will. It does look like a Manaphy, Sam. It's the child of Manaphy. You can breed Man Manaphy's the only breedable counter. legendary. You can breed it with a ditto and you get one of these things. Cosmic Eclipse. Cosmic, Cosmic Eclipse. Eclipse. There it is. Not Cosmic Encounter. All right, let's see. Is anybody hyped for TCG Pocket? Dude, I'm pretty hyped. I don't know if you know this about me, but I played a lot of Marvel Snap. Really? I didn't know that. I, yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I kind of kind of put it down, but I played it for a long time, and I played it a lot. And the game, like the the app itself, just is so clean. It puts live to shame. It's got a great, like, it's it's a mobile game, but it's got a great desktop client. It looks so clean on the desktop, too. Uh, and from what I was seeing from, like, the trailers of Pocket, it, it looks like Pocket is kind of looking a lot nicer. It's looking a lot nicer than Live does. Like, <laughs> yeah, it the does. Snap your yeah. animations. The card art's way cooler. I didn't uh, realize from the trailer, I'm looking at this Poke Beach article now, that they have set names, like unique set names for TCG Pocket. So the first set is Genetic Apex. Oh. That's cool. Yeah, it's a uh, couple of rule changes. There's like this whole energy zone like mechanic. Uh, it kind of kind of uh, the big three uh, is what they've got going on for the first, uh, the main Pokemon in the in that genetic apex yeah. set. They got the Mewtwo, they got the Charizard, they got the Pikachu. That's like 90% of the world's population's favorite Pokemon is right there. Yeah, that's super cool. Yeah, I... So I, I... I got into Go for a little bit when it first came out. But I've never been able to get into like Masters... Like Pokemon Masters EX or... Like any of the, the other like mobile Pokemon games, but... Yeah, TCG Pocket, I think I'll probably be into. If, I think for nothing else than just ripping ripping packs. <laughs> yeah. For me, what I think the big the big kind of thing is gonna be for yikes, words. Let's try this again. For me, whether I like TCG Pocket or not is going to come down to how competitive it is in the battle system and if there's any decent interaction. Like if the card game part of it feels pretty good, then I think it will capture my attention, at least partially. And if not, then I'm probably not going to be interested in it because I I'm just not really much of a collector, even yeah. in the TCG. You guys know this. You've seen my binder. I barely <laughs> even own a binder, dude. I'm with this... you. Every time I go to locals, Justin, who's I think watching us, he's always like, "Dude, you got your binder? Let's trade." I'm like, "Can I just pay you for the cards?" Because I don't have a binder. <laughs> exactly. It is. Uh, it's directly uh, from creatures. Like creatures is directly involved in in this. So I would expect the battle mechanics to be interesting. Uh, yeah, I think it's a great pipeline just into the TCG. Yeah, for sure. I'm sure. I, I wonder how many people got into Yu Gi Oh from playing Duel Links. I know. Yeah. I know. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I think like Jack played. Probably hasn't played like any like actual Yu Gi Oh, but played like Duel Links. Uh, I think a lot of people probably were in the same boat where you don't really want yeah. to invest in getting into. It's like hard yeah. to get into a game as complicated as Yu Gi Oh from the get go. So a uh, simplified version that's so accessible to everyone, it just makes a lot of sense. And then you know you could make a lot of new fans that want to get into the main game. And I think it's a. Uh, I think it's important that that the Pokemon company kind of went in this direction, like looking towards the future of of the Pokemon trading card game and what could happen with it. Yeah, for sure. Sam makes yeah, a good point. I do wonder if you can if your code cards will work at all with TCG Pocket. I doubt it because I feel like it's going to be a separate thing. Yeah, I think it's going to be its own separate thing based off of what, at least I gathered from the trailer. Yeah, it seemed like that there's no cards that have any overlap at all. Yeah, um, from what it was seeming like, you get like two free packs a day, and then to get more packs is probably some kind of like gotcha style game. If I had to yeah. guess, that's kind of what it seemed like. So you would just like do uh, 
purchases in the app for more packs as i i guess how it would work they could come out with some kind of like yeah separate code system too uh would would, like maybe like to promote it when it first comes out they might like give out codes and stuff i could totally see that as for will the cards be in irl i want to say probably not because when we were watching the trailer some of like like the really like rare art cards uh it like you can like zoom into the card and it's like a whole world and that's not really something you can do with like a physical card so i think that's kind of cool how they're embracing like the the medium to create like better art uh in a way that you you couldn't do physically i think that's kind of cool to take advantage of that right yeah. one thing i will say with the card artwork though is that um not a lot of people have noticed this but on the EXs that we have right now, um, the area on the card that has the attack text and the abilities and all of those things is actually slightly translucent. And you can see kind of what the artwork would look like a little bit behind that. So if you've never noticed that before, um, take a look at that because that is pretty interesting and does suggest that the way that they did the artwork for this cards um, they did sort of make the artwork as the full card and then put like the hued sort of layer over top of it, which is yeah. pretty interesting. Yeah, that is cool. They are still technically sort of full arts like the V's were, but they're they're right. covered up by the text box and it's barely see-through. I also, I'm looking at this TCG Pocket article, like the original one that came out. And it's kind of cool. They have a Gardevoir card in there. And the art from that Gardevoir card was one of the winners of, I think, the TCG art contest that they did one year, which is pretty cool. Oh, that is really cool. Yeah, this looks cool. That'd be really neat if they continued to do things like that. The thing is, ever since we found that new testing tool that is not in any way (laughs) related to Limitless TCG or anything like that um (laughs) i don't play tcg live anymore but i'll definitely play tcg pocket that's what i think that's how i'll play like the tcg on the go for fun i don't know unless i'm really unless i'm really grinding for a tournament and i'm just like fine i'll play live it's actually funny how much work i'm willing to put in to not play pokemon live (laughs) did max enter the art contest so much yeah you should have seen my my cloth drawing it was it was it was uh next level a thing of beauty oh yeah he he had the he had the pinchers oh yeah Ooh, that's a critical part of cloth that that makes cloth cloth you know it, it's one of the things the unhinged scissors yeah oh man how's the how's the website looking are we still it's, waiting we're still waiting i think um yeah we're still waiting is cook okay is cook a reprint yes okay i figure while we wait though we can take a look um at Pokeka Book, which is a great website if people don't know about it for finding Japanese deck lists that are doing well in like their league cups and league challenges. Um, and apparently <laughs> Miascarada won one. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, I've always kind of liked Miascarada. I mean, it theoretically should have a good Zard matchup. I don't know, grass type. They're playing the Master Ball in it, too. That's crazy. They got the Master Ball? Oh, wait. I'm not sharing my screen. That's my bad. There we go. Jack wants to know what Cook does. It heals 70. Oh, yeah. It heals 70. (laughs) Which, funny enough, uh, that card was in a regional winning deck list from last season. Uh, No, it wasn't. Minnesota native Piper Lapine played it in her Mewtwo V Union list. That's right. I forgot about that. Because, really? Yes, because you would you could heal two hundred a turn. Right. Sometimes that wasn't always they, enough. if they were doing more than two hundred, you needed to have a turn where you cooked to to heal off the extra damage. I'm in disbelief. 
yep. I can't believe it. But true story. That's that's incredible. That is that is truly incredible. Well, got the dub to <laughs> to prove the point. So, okay, guys, uh, you know how I went crazy one day and I said that we should put Palkia in Roaring Moon. They did it. They did it, dude. They did it. <laughs> they did it. <laughs> no way. I guess with the Moltres V gone, if you ever want to attack with a Greninja again, you probably need some other way to yeah. do it. You need some other cool V-Star power in the deck. Dude, they got four baby moons in here. They have an Iron Hands. Only two energy switches, and they think they're going to Iron Hands. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, it's a bold move. It's a bold moon. Bold moon. I am, I am sad. For Blood Moon. I think it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be one of those cards that really changes the game, and hopefully in a good way. But um, the fact that it's just so splashable into literally, literally any deck, yeah, I think is really interesting. It might make the format feel uncreative if everyone's playing it, but it definitely doesn't feel unfair, if you know what I mean, because everyone can do yeah. it. Jack wants to know why it's not a gate deck. I don't know. Maybe it should be. Maybe that's the new way to play Moon. You play it with Colruses and... Seems to be the way. Dude, <clears throat> Ursa Luna is going to be a crazy gate deck. That's what I think. Yeah, it could, it could be anything. You can gate to it. You can bank Excalibur to it. You got, you got options. Yeah. You got options. You can Matang to it. You can Matang, you can matang to it. it. It's too bad. Think, it would be kind of cool if Blood Moon or Saluna was an ancient card, so you could Saba to it. Oh, that would be pretty interesting. That would have been pretty good. I it still will be very good. It'll does this does Blood Moon or, or Saluna push out Radiant Zard in most decks? Like, I guess there weren't that many decks yes, that were playing Radiant yes. Zard before, but like, because it's I guess Charizard still probably plays Radzard. Uh, yeah, so I guess it depends on why you're here. why you're playing the Radzard because Charizard's playing it to swing the prize trade more than to hit for 250 because they don't really need to hit for 250. They need to right. swing like take a knockout with a one prizer in certain matchups, and um, but something like Sablezard, if Sablezard was still a deck, I don't know. I just think it's crazy to be able to play Radzard basically and Rad Radiant Greninja in the same deck. I think that's so sure. Cool. Yeah, I think part of it too is going to be how consistently our decks going to be able to hit for two sixty, right? Because like theoretically, if it's really difficult to be able to one hit KO this thing, then the functional difference between this and Radiant Charizard are very little. Um, if you think about it, kind of in the sense that mm -hmm. if you're assuming Radiant Charizard is getting knocked out. Um, but if Blood Moon, if Blood Moon Ursa Luna is able to survive for at least two turns, functionally taking up you know one prize per turn, then I would say it is essentially a complete replacement for Radiant Charizard. But um, there are a lot of decks that are going to be able to hit for two sixty or more pretty consistently. So I yeah. think that's kind of a big question mark in my mind. It's all about that big cape, though. Maybe yeah, you got the cape. You got you. You got the either the cool cape or you got the the charm of courage. You got yeah. You got other ways to make them have to do more than two sixty for sure. There are, but also the very virtue that you can't use the attack a second time makes it seem like. Uh, why can't I think of the name for this card? The new cross switcher a spec. Uh, prime, prime catcher. catcher. Prime catcher. Like this. This card seems theoretically very strong with Prime Catcher. Yeah. I mean, if you're playing it in something like a Lost Zone deck, though, you have enough switching cards anyway. There's jet right. energies. You can jet into something and retreat back into the Ursaluna. Um, I think the scariest thing about the Ursaluna is the Penny Loop, though. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be... That could be nutty. Yeah, I, I wonder I wonder how expensive that card's gonna be because it just seems like something that everybody's gonna want a copy of. Right. It could be an easy two of in a lot of decks. 
I I feel like like I don't know. Yeah, I could see it. It's just only... like it's just really good at the end of the game, you know? Like you, you know, like Chi and Pao, you like if you need to ta- do 240 damage, you got to find, you know, find a, a superior at the end of the game, mm-hmm. do 240. Well, you can also just find a nest ball and find Ursa Luna and do 240 for free. Yeah. I actually think there's an argument to play. If you're playing three Chi and Pao already, just play two Chi and Pao and an Ursa Luna. Obviously, the Ursa Luna doesn't have the ability to find your energies, and it is sometimes really nice to start the Chi Pao. But just to have a, a 260 HP attacker that needs less energy to do 240 damage seems pretty good. Like, it can KO any yeah. basic V, it can KO any basic EX except itself, which is kind of funny. Right. Such a low yeah. low maintenance, like, it's a low maintenance attacker. Like, once once the game's gone on for a little bit and some prizes have been taken, it's just so efficient. Yeah. Well, it's unfortunate the site is delayed, but we'll keep we'll keep waiting on it for a little bit here and see how things are going. Um, yeah. Just means there's really busted cards because they broke the website. <laughs> the Sinistra just was too good. They had the they unrevealed it. They were about to reveal the Sinistra. They're like, wait, this card's too good. We can't print it. It's too good. It's too hot. Okay, let me let me throw this one out to you guys and the chat. Okay, so we're expecting for sure a Sinistra EX. Uh, the Terra Fighting Greninja EX and the Terra Dr- Dragon Dragapult EX. Uh, which one of those do you think will be the best? I don't think we're getting the Terra Dragapult in this one. I think we get that in the next set. Oh, really? Yeah, I think so. I think it's just the Terra Greninja, potentially. I could be wrong. No, okay. in the uh, in the Poke Beach article, I think it, it says it should be in there. It's in our May set, but there's another Japanese set that comes out in April. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. All right. But I do think Sinistra will be bad. And I don't have any reasoning for that beyond the fact that I think it can only be either Grass or Ghost. And it doesn't seem like they're going to give us any more good Psychic types since we had Gardevoir. And Grass is never good. So I'm <laughs> going to say Sinistra is bad. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, i will be happy to options? eat my words because i i think that's a fun pokemon so i will calling calling grass pokemon bad is uh yeah it's a pretty safe take i'd say i'd say you're probably right yeah unfortunately okay max what were my other options i have a goldfish memory okay well it, we might we, we likely won't see the terra greninja but the other ones were the terra fighting greninja and uh the and the sinistra so and okay. yeah so i don't know the fighting greninja could be cool uh yeah i don't because... know i kind of i want to believe fighting greninja could be really good i mean greninja historically is a pretty efficient attacker um and i don't know i mean we saw garchomp ex have uh 160 for one fighting energy and accelerate three fighting energy i wonder if we could see something similar um maybe not energy acceleration but you know maybe something where it does like 100 damage and then 20 or 30 damage to like two or three of your opponent's bench pokemon that'd be kind of interesting yeah yeah i think i think the problem with garchomp is that it was a fighting pokemon that they that they tear it into water and fighting pokemon are always bad with the Greninja, it's a water Pokemon that they tear it into fighting. And water Pokemon are like always sick. That's true. So yeah, they're always sick. It's got cool. that going for it. Yeah, it could be it cool. It does have that going for it. It will have a water type attacks. I mean, it'll definitely have water yeah. type in the attack yeah, cost. That's true. So that already makes it like something. I think I know how we could guarantee this uh, Greninja fighting could be a good card. So hear me out. You give. The stage one, an ability to search your deck for any trainer card. And then when it evolves again, you get to search your deck for any two trainer cards. That's way too broken. They'd never print that. They would never print that. They'd print that. Yeah, it does seem a little too powerful now that you're now that you're mentioning it. I'm dreaming. But I'm dreaming we of an Intellion line reprint. Man, this dreaming. guy was the biggest Arc Intel head of all time. It's true. Catch Tom, me. You were 
crazy with it. <laughs> Top I love that. Though. Indianapolis. Yeah, I could have gone further too. I the worst thing is I'm I've always missed my top thirty two at a regional by just like my opponent just having the absolute nuts. So at Indianapolis, uh, I just needed to evolve into a Drizzle or an Inteleon to get a boss's orders for game. But I kept getting to the point where I had like one Sobble on my bench. And my opponent just had like three bosses orders in a row to KO it. So he would KO my Sobble, I'd be like, that's fine. I'll get another Sobble down. Next turn, I'll have my bosses orders. And he just kept doing it. It's like, no Drizzile for you. Ridiculous. That's terrible. Quite tragic. Um, yeah, I think the Greninja could be cool. Does anyone know what Sinistra's thing is in the VGC? Like, are there any um predictions of how they could translate that into a card like what what's its thing i i know yeah. it like possesses people or something or maybe i'm wrong about that so in the in vgc it uh it's got an ability uh like it's called hospitality and it uh it heals uh your guy it's, it's a healing ability for your team uh and then it's got an okay. attack called matcha gotcha which is a great attack name uh wow. Yeah, uh, and I think it does something like it, like I don't, know, I forget what it does. It like burns or something. Which in the v, in VGC burning is pretty sick. Yeah. Yeah, doesn't it it's cut burns. your attack stat or something if it if you're burned halves in the VGC? Your, yeah, halves your attack yeah. stat. Halves the attack stat, which is just devastating. Yeah, like that's if rough. You're if you're a physical sweeper. You're like, pack it up, go home. So his attack will just let you steal your opponent's deck. Or you can eat one of their cards and call a judge and say they're playing a 59 card yeah, deck. Yeah. Stack. <laughs> judge my opponent slobbering over my card as we speak. You say, matcha gotcha. Matcha gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's messed up, man. <laughs> I wish I what could if, find this uh, website even though it's down. I what if you just started doing that to your own cards? So Inigo? Yeah, you just like started matcha gotching your opponent just as a flex. Like Man. I don't care about this game anymore. Time to matcha gotcha you. <laughs> yeah, you just got matcha gotcha. You just got matcha gotcha, yeah. I'd love to see it at some point. Well, dang, our high hopes of a sick reveal tonight might be dashed. I don't know how dashed. much longer you guys want to wait, but I'm down to wait a little longer. Cause I, I'm down to wait a little I bit longer. It. Yeah, I'll I'm, wait a little bit longer. I'll, I'll, I mean, depending, even if even if we were to end the stream right now, I would be waiting up to see. Yeah, that's fair. We're to bed anyway, so. That's fair. We'll yeah. we'll keep it going then. <clears throat> Let me grab some grab some fuel. So there's a, uh, um, I have like a family friend in Japan right now, and she was like, uh, "Send me a list of Pokemon stuff you want," and I was like, "That sounds so sick." So I was looking through the Pokemon Center Japan website, and first of all, Pokemon Center Japan has way cooler things than we get, like way oh, cooler really? things. Yeah. Um, like just searching through there is like fun because they have really cool stuff, but I'm trying to find it. They had this new item, uh, which was like way more expensive than I would have paid for it, but it was like, yeah, here it is. I'm going to pull this up. Max, I was telling Austin, my, we have a family friend in Japan right now and she was like, just send me what Pokemon stuff you want. And I was like, I will. So I was going on the uh, the Pokemon Center website, and they have like this display thing of all the badges from Paldea, which is just like looks super sick. But it's like a hundred and fifty bucks for like Dang. pins. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was like, no shot, that's zero chance. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. Yeah, but it's kind of cool. Like it's got all of them in here. I hope they they do that again because I know you were saying 
that back in the day they would give out like gym badges at like Pokemon leagues. Oh, it was so hype. That was yeah. such a fun part of going to leagues, trying to get all the badges. Yeah, that was super cool. I do miss those days. Maybe uh maybe we'll we'll get some of that back at some point yeah, here soon. I think yeah. we will. They brought back the 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 pop pack, so you know, not exactly. anything's possible. Here's to hoping. Did you guys get pop packs back in the day? Because I know you guys played during the the Diamond and Pearl era. Oh yeah. Yes, we did. You opened them all. Oh yeah. I opened them all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I opened them all. But uh, I don't know what they're going for now. But it's just the one with the Umbreon and Espeon that are like crazy expensive. I think. Yeah, those ones are crazy expensive. Which that was just a little before my time. Um, like I I collected at that point, but I didn't go to any leagues or anything. Yeah. So. Although, I do have uh, through through my collection during that time, I do have uh, the Gold Star Jolteon and Vaporeon. Um, That's pretty sick. Wow, which are I love those cards. They're they're good times. Yeah. So next is the next tournament up. Is that? Uh... There, is there any regionals or special events next weekend? In like no, I think Vancouver's the last. It's just one. Vancouver. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's crazy. We can check Limitless, and then we can take a look at the Champions Leagues or not the Champions Leagues, whatever they're called, the City Leagues. Are you two both going to Vancouver? No, I am not. Max is though, right? Yeah, Sam and I are both going. Nice. That's the one that's going to be like twelve hundred players, right? Yeah. It was originally going to be 800, but they added so many, so many more. Uh, yeah, it's more, it's more seats. Spots, yeah. Oh, Sam, Sam did bring up a good point. Azul did a pretty cool, uh, a cool tier list this Oh week. man, do we want to wade into the controversy? We could. Oh we could. no. We're, okay, what was the controversy? All right, we're. I'm pulling it up. Is it on his Twitter? I assume it's on his Twitter. Yeah. We might be talking about two different tier lists. But we can go, we can look at both of them. Well, there's the tier list for the regionals, but then there's the tier list of how hard it is to win a cup by state. <laughs> did I? Oh no! Did I tell you I actually <laughs> made the tier list of the regionals? You did? Yeah, that was me that submitted it. That's sick. I, know. I didn't know that. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, <laughs> that is sick. But I think we'll just jump to this the very. Yeah, yeah. Very uh, contentious tier list. Where Minnesota was placed in C tier for their locals. No, no, no. We were. Oh, well, yeah, we were C. We're in C, baby. We're in yeah, C that tier. That was messed up. We're in C tier. That, that can't be right. It was how hard it is to win a cup. Okay, but to be fair, Azul doesn't go to any locals. He literally just made this because he knew people would get pissed. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Man, there's no I mean, way it's harder to win a league cup in Utah than it is in Minnesota. There's just simply no shot. Yeah. Well, who's in who's that. in Utah besides Makani Tran? Like, am I crazy to think that there's not any other like very well known players in Utah? You know what? The number one play point holder in the world lives in Utah. Who oh, is really? that? Who is it? Pokey Duels. Oh, <laughs> yeah, man goes everything. Um, wow. Ohio, Ohio is like, I guess that's like the Mahone crew, you know. Yeah, Jesse Parker's carrying. Jesse Ohio. Parker is carrying Ohio because he, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I then, heard, I heard on stream that he has. He was claim. I think he was claiming that he ha- Jesse has the most league cup wins all time of anyone. That's crazy. Really? Yeah, he said he has 18, which seems low, but I guess League Cups haven't all... been around for that long. Okay, but that is, that's at least from 2017, right? Or when did Jesse start yeah. playing? Was it 2017? I, I don't know when he started playing, but I think that's that's like when League Cups yeah. started around 2017. That's a I good mean, amount. That's that's, that's a very respectable 18 amount. 18 is a lot. Yeah, a- 18 sure. is a lot. And Ohio, Ohio, I wouldn't put Ohio lower on the tier list than, than Azul has placed it, you know? Oh, no, no, so, no. Ohio so definitely doesn't go down. Yeah. 
Okay, but I just want to know, is it Virginia, Maryland, and D.C.? Are the, is that just being carried because, like, the whole Bradner crew is on the East Coast and they just farm that area? I can uh, see it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of good players that live in that area, for sure. Burge, I guess. Burge is known for tearing up the Northeast region. <laughs> he's, a, he's a shark. Caleb has, yeah, Caleb basically has 18 cup wins this season. He might as well. I would like to know how many cup wins <laughs> Caleb has all time. It's a lot. I know it's a lot. There's got to be a lot. I think, I think Caleb, if Caleb was able to travel to more regionals and ICs, he would be like way up there. That's, I'm convinced. I think Yeah. Caleb is obviously just a very good player. He's cracked. Absolutely cracked. I cannot get past him in top four. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have uh, three seconds in uh, this this season, and two of the seconds are because of Caleb. He oh yeah, in two of the two of the finals. Other than arguing that Minnesota should be higher on this tier list, though, I really have no no issues with it, except that you know. I don't know. Nebraska probably has some really difficult league cups. Nebraska? <laughs> yeah. You got to find it in the corn. <laughs> it's hard, yeah, you got to find it first. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> yeah, you got to shuck, shuck your way to the store. Iowa should be higher also. Iowa should be higher. In they defense of really Iowa. There. Yeah. That's what like was Iowa at? I, I was in C tier with Minnesota. And they've got Pokey Hawkeye himself yeah, out there. That guy's a goat gamer. But the other tier list, the maybe the more important tier list, is regional winning decks. Or, or decks that won a major last season. And I know Max has some thoughts about this, so I'm just gonna let him let him go. I do. I, I sure do. Jack told me that after I had submitted it before Azul had done the tier list, that if I was in Eternatus tier, I would never he would never let me live <laughs> But you oh. beat Thankfully, out you did beat out the Arctina winners. Dude, he okay, yeah. God bless on that. Uh he, Azul was really waffling on whether to put the Gudra in B or C. But he was like, you know what? There was not that many Gudra players, and Gudra did like really well in that format, actually. Like it had a lot of like solid finishes. So yeah, that was a crack deck for sure. I, yeah. I uh I was like it had a like not that good of a Lugia matchup, it was definitely unfavored, but it was like you were so favored in everything else. That was just like a sick play. Yeah, it rolled it rolled Reggie's. I remember that <laughs> very well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's the classic picture from Fort Wayne, <laughs> Indiana. Maybe one of the greatest pictures of all time of Grant Manley just being absolutely bodied by Gudra in top eight. Dude, there, he played that matchup as well as a human could have played that matchup. And, and there's just, just still, still no still winning it. No I had terrible starts like both games, and it still just didn't matter. Just doesn't matter. Yeah, I want to say a shout out though to Piper, who had two different, very, very wildly different decks. That one yeah. regionals, both in S tier. Yeah, both sick plays. The Mewtwo V Union control deck was still one of the coolest decks that came out of like the out of that era. Yeah, that was very yeah. cool. And um that was like the rise of Lugia also. So that was like one that was one of the few events that felt like it wasn't won by Lugia in that format. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the 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 Veltal uh so good into Lugia. Yeah, super, super strong. The Inteleon Radzard deck was also very cool, but I also remember Baltimore being like the most underwhelming regional of all time because Lost Origins had been out for like a week and everyone nobody cared about Baltimore. They're like, Can we just play with the new the new set already? Yeah, that's right. That Dude, is true. I, I Peyton know, yeah. <laughs> Peyton's talking about Me Too V Union carrying our team challenge team in the final team challenge of all time. And that is true. Peyton carried us with Mewtwo V Union, like all the way to top eight. It was sick. That is the sick. W's left and right with the V Union. 
I didn't put any time into V Union. Uh, into that deck. I don't remember what I was even playing at that time. Reggie's. Was I playing Reggie's? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so I... of this tier list, what was your favorite deck that won that won an event? Or the coolest deck? I don't know. Dude, it you know the answer, bro. It's definitely okay, okay. Well, Gudra. Besides, <laughs> besides Gudra. Besides Gudra. Besides Gudra. Besides yeah, Gudra, I yeah. I I hate to admit it, but it's Eternatus. You were the Eternatus guy, huh? Yeah, I just always thought Eternatus was a cool card. And I don't know. It was cool that it was doing well in that format because it was just trying to shut Lugia out of the game with the stupid wheezing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I still just always think about at, at that four wing tournament that Jake Jensen and his I know I know this is Unfortunate that you got you got hit in collateral oh, by it, but the Jay food. Jensen with the canceling cologne, that was such a sick play. Yeah. Double canceling clone, bro. Double canceling clone and Lugia. So sick. It, it, it was carrying. I also just I mean, look at how many wins Lugia has last season though. That is gross. Just yeah, just disgusting. It had so many wins. Like yeah, Tord kind of like one. cracked the deck at Toronto. And then from there, it just, like, went on a tear. Yeah. Long <laughs> live Lugia. Okay, I have to yeah, right. I have to make a confession. I'm, I'm kind of thinking about Lugia for EUIC. No. I know, I know. I it's know. such a bait. It's such a bait. I know, but literally, okay, just listen. Just listen. Okay. So okay. I've been playing it. And it... Okay, well, this is partly why. I played... Four games of Lugia against Goldango today, just like sitting at my desk, working, and also playing Lugia versus Goldango. And I got the turn two double Archaeops all four games. I mean, that's really good. And also, you know that's not how it's going to be. But also, you, Gold, Goldango still won. So. Have you ever <laughs> seen the show That's So Raven? <laughs> A long time ago. I have ago. definitely seen that. Okay, show. you know, okay, so in That's a Raven, sometimes she'll get a vision, right? And she gets that look in her eye. I just got that look in my eye right now. And I just foresaw you walking up to me at uh, EUIC. And I'm like looking at you to see because you're walking up and you're going to tell me if you want or lost. And you're going to, I see you shaking your head and going, man, I couldn't get turned. I, I got like turn four Archeops. <laughs> yeah, but I thumping snored for 160. <laughs> Huge, huge if true. Gold Dango sucks, just, Peyton. What are you smoking, bro? Yeah, the dingus. Not sure about that. Peyton doesn't know yeah. the technology. That's true. He doesn't know the technology yet. Jack, will soon enough. You can't, Jack. You can't lie. If you fly to London and you have a Master Ball in your deck, that would be so sick. Have you seen Master Ball? Oh, he's got the Master Ball. Where is my Master Ball? I don't know where my Master Ball is, but Jack. I was, it's so I, I was supposed to give him the uh, the call for family Mancinos, and then he was like, actually, don't give them to me because I don't <laughs> want to bait myself into playing this deck. <laughs> oh, man. You know what strikes me looking at this tier list, though? What's that? Is that I kind of forgot about this, but Reggie's didn't win a single event. Isn't that crazy? That deck saw so much play and it was so strong, but it just it could never so quite much get play. there. It was so strong and it yeah, it just couldn't get there. How many of Reggie's were so in wild, the top dude. eight? Jack, you don't want to play this? Look at that thing. You dude, know, there's consistently to. at least one or two Reggie's in every one of these events, I bet. No, the Peoria regional, that Peoria regional had like had a lot had like five Reggies. Dude, well, Azul's whole crew played Reggies and they all I, they all made like top 16. Yeah, and they or just better. Didn't win. Look at that tournament. There was a ton of Reggies at Peoria that made top 8. Jack, you know you want to play Lugia. It's okay though. <laughs> <laughs> Only a little bit, Sam. Only oh, maybe a little it wasn't bit. Peoria. It was Peoria. No, Peoria. 
it no was, Reggie's made top eight. It was was Kid one Stark of the ones though there. got ninth. Got ninth. And then Grant was eighteenth. Azul, oh, they were all in top thirty-two or better. Oh, dude, Salt Lake yeah. had four in top eight. That's what we're yeah, thinking. Yeah, is that the one Azul, we were thinking Grant, about? and Caleb all made top eight with Reggie's. That was crazy. That's right. Yeah, that was wild. And then Hale came through with the Gudra. It was like, uh, uh-uh. that was a sick play too because Tina was very good in that format. And pretty good. It, it was, was pretty good. That Art was the Gudra best was kind was of a bold reason. play. Yeah, it was a pretty bold play. Yeah, because because uh, Tina was definitely very powerful. Damn, I miss Evolution hey, Incense the... so much. Yeah, the Salt Lake City okay. Regionals just. Uh... Wacky. That was an unfortunate one for both of us, Austin. Yeah, that was a tough one. That was a really tough one. That was my worst regional performance. Did your Gudra grind start in Peoria and end in Fort Wayne, though? Was that what you played to every major event? Except Toronto. Oh, that's wait, right. We, wait, made, wait, wait, wait. we made a huge mistake in Toronto. Huge yes. mistake. Actually, I think at Peoria, I might have played Dark Ride at that one. I can't remember. No, you definitely played Gudra to Peoria. I definitely played dark ride to one regional did you then, then it would have been peoria it would have been peoria if it was one it no what did you play to milwaukee milwaukee, it milwaukee, was milwaukee the prior milwaukee. season yeah yeah because yeah. you were on gudra from the minute it came out i think dude we played at bunker and you were playing rapid strike mally against me and it was like the first time i had like i was playing gudra and you 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 got rid of so many rapid strike cards. And you're like, dude, I'm only doing like. Yeah, I still with like, the, like, I was still with the KO. Yeah. <laughs> still with KO. I was like, wow, this deck is sick. Yeah, I remember that was kind of cool. I think the Lost Origin format. Partially, I have some love for it because the fall fo- the format that followed it was so bad. But the Sword and Shield, the Lost Origin format, actually was really fun. I think. That was one of my favorite set reveal the one of my favorite sets that had ever yeah. come out i think it just changed the format in such a fun way like flower selecting has gotten a little Flower's... it's just been so good for so long yeah. so sure there's a little bit of like burnout from it but at the time it was such a fresh like introduction yes. like a fresh like mechanic in the game it was so fun yeah it was yeah. very good and the fact that reggie's was good palky was still good um dude palky was broke. and that was the set drapion came out in so mew was kind of like starting to be pushed out of the format like enough that it wasn't as much of a problem yeah that was a good format that was a very good yeah. format i started to kind of hate palkia like palk intel was definitely a deck that i i was a strong deck it was a very strong deck i think of all of the like of all of the decks that have been like the tier one decks in recent memory i this is a controversial opinion i recognize this but that's probably my least favorite one. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was Palk Intel. That was my least favorite. It just but felt I like that deck always play... had it always had the answer for whatever you threw at it. Yeah, that's that's how it always felt when I was playing against it. It just didn't really matter what you did. You just like people just always seemed to have it. Yeah. And uh, which it was, was just... a little bit frustrating, but. It was so it was like cool low maintenance too for how much damage yeah. it could do. Yeah. And you couldn't really limit your bench against it super well. And even if you tried to, they did play the Echoing Horn and then they had Choice Belts. So they could always hit that like 280 against V Star decks. Um, right. Super consistent. And yeah, with the Intellion engine, they just always had what they needed. And then on top of that, they had the Greninja sniping stuff. And yeah, that was it a was very good. good deck. Um, but some of my some of that is also probably bias because I was a Reggie player, so and that was a matchup that was definitely very winnable, but also could be pretty tricky at times. Didn't they start playing Tool Jammer in Palkia because of Reggie's? They did, and that was super Palkia. annoying. Yeah, it was super annoying because <laughs> they just throw Manaphy down, throw on the throw on that uh, Tool Jammer, and then. It was really tough to be able to deal with that in any effective way. Do you know what I just noticed about the Salt Lake City? 
with the number of players. <laughs> Dude, in less than two years, we have triple that. Salt Lake like, only had 837 yeah. people? That's insane. Okay, now I want to go back and look at the tournaments. And <laughs> Okay, so Peoria was 1,000, and that was a lot. Like over 1,000, approaching 1,100 was a lot. Dude, people are like, this is huge. And then... Knoxville had 1100 Orlando had 1400 but this Orlando was still some was... COVID stuff so like yeah. this might not have been maxed out capacity and now yeah what are we going into Orlando this year going to have at least 2400 masters so f- a thousand yeah, more masters at Orlando this year than last season that's wild <laughs> that's true I remember looking at some of these like Champions League uh tournaments and just thinking like man these tournaments are so big. There's no way we're going to see numbers like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and all of a sudden now it's just not only is it possible, we're quickly heading to that. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty crazy. Um, I do. I don't know. I think it's, I think it's really cool uh, that we we're getting there. I do have like a little bit of nostalgia for like, I don't know. If they do really bring back something like States next season, I do think that there's a place to have a, uh, a sort of tournament between the size of a regional and a League Cup. Like, there's such a jump from a League Cup to going to a regional now, and our regionals are bigger than even ICs used to be, and ICs are just enormous. So to have, like, a, a tournament of, like, four or 500 people, having something of that size I think is good to have in the circuit um i don't know what do you guys think about that no i was a big fan of states states were like they were like my favorite i mean they're my favorite tournaments of when i played in seniors like i think for me states were even more fun than regionals um i don't know why i thought that but it was just cool to like show up and like you got every like big player in the state there like yeah. Um, and it's just, it's just kind of cool. Like I, you'd get a little bit of traveling from the other States as well, obviously, but it's just kind of cool to just be like, I, you, you know, if you, if you won States, you could be like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the best player in the state this year. I got the proof. Yeah. Right. That's the part of it that I do think is really, really cool is, is sort of the localization of a bigger tournament. Um, but I, I think I still like regionals better, I think, um, than states. But I will I would be so, so, so happy if we got states back in addition to still having regionals. I think yeah. that would be so cool. Uh, forums in the chat brings states. up the, the glass trophies. The trophies from states were so sick. Oh, they I still have mine somewhere. Cool. They were like these curved glass trophies that were like um, engraved with like I, like I, the one I have has a dragonite on it. It's so cool. Yeah, I think that would be so cool to get some of that stuff back. Even like the medals that you'd get for winning, like what was back then the equivalent of a league cup. Like, I I won two of those in my last season as a senior, and like they were so sick. Like, I would have like proudly walked into school. Like I would have been in like eighth grade. I would have like proudly walked into school with those things on, man. Heck yeah. They were so cool. Montana does get states. I think I believe to my knowledge, every state had states. So yeah, pretty neat. So are we we're hitting up the Montana years. states oh, if they dude, come you back. No, we're carpooling to the Montana states. <laughs> oh, for sure. Honestly, it'd just be fun for the drive. And then you get the you get the Pokemon tournament on top of it. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Don't go don't go O two drop at the Montana State though. So it'll be a very very. That's sad. a long drive for O two drop. <laughs> that is that's some serious disappointment <laughs> if that happens. <laughs> when when did they stop doing states? Do you know? Um. I had quit by the time they stopped doing it. So I, I don't remember. Was I, it when they like started doing like league cups and stuff? I don't know. 
It might be. Yeah, because it looks like if Limitless has it broken down by the modern era and the legacy era, and the legacy era ends 2015 to 2016, and then the modern era starts 2016 to 2017. So maybe that's when it changed. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, that that would make sense. <clears throat> huh. Man, this uh the website is is real man, down, man. Was, dude. Yeah, that's too bad. Disappointing for sure. But we can look at some city league results from yesterday. Let's go. Take a quick Charizard Pidgeot. It's coming back. Surprise, surprise, right? Oh, that's right. Limitless has their deck builder now, too. That's crazy. The deck builder is like, it's pretty slick. It might be like the best deck builder we have access to now. Oh, Limitless updated? Yeah, mm -hmm. they have a, a deck builder. It's very nice. And you okay. can open, so you can open decks from tournaments in the deck builder and start changing cards immediately. Oh. Yeah, which is cool. And then you can export it. And you can, I think you can export it once you build the deck in there too. I think you can export it for a deck list for like a League Cup too, which is sick. Interesting. But oh, this, this is double Rotom V? What? Yeah, double Rotom V, double Charmeleon, <laughs> no Devo, or no Evo. Uh, playing a Turo, three counter catchers, and a little wow. skimpy on the Poffins. I'm down with double Rotom because it's so hard to find it now. So what better way to find it than just have it in your opening hand? Yeah, than just to play two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no Luminion, yeah. actually. They they didn't even yeah, cut any. No they cut the Luminion for double Rotom. Yeah. Sometimes, okay, I swear. Sometimes I see a Japanese deck. And I just have to assume that they didn't have the card. And that's why they didn't play it. Like, <laughs> why would you ever play Rotom, right. double Rotom over the Luminia? <laughs> that might be a little crazy. Yeah, I was going to say, I think I think you have to play a fish. But, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I kind of like the Turo. Although I, I would like it even better if it was uh, honestly a Thornton. I would like it even better if it was a Thornton. Yeah, I don't know. You have the 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 Turos then lets you pick up a damage Charizard, which I yeah. think is is cool. I think that's fine. It's good. Gets gets the Rotom off your board. Gets uh gets a damaged uh damaged Zard off your board. I wonder if that means now that they're playing Turo Palpad, if. If more decks are playing Turo Palpad, like more Charizard decks are, maybe Snorlax starting to do better. But there's no Snorlax in this top 16 from at least this City League. Second place think... was, was oh, Chimpow. Chap. Chap I think the Snorlax stall uh, deck got in, like was inflated from those uh, those city from those championship league results. I think the deck isn't as good as the results made it seem. Yeah. Three counter catcher in that Charizard deck, that is wild. Three counter catcher, two boss, that's a lot of gust. This Champau deck playing two Champau and the three 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 Be barrel. <laughs> three three Be barrel Jack. Look at that. Genius. And then Charizard Be barrel just coming in third. I, I think these decks are so comparable like you could just play either one it seems and be fine for charizard yeah i just really don't i don't get though just playing one tm evolution i yeah, feel I like you gotta play that. two but I at the same yeah. time i don't i don't know i feel like you can't really rely on it it's like a strategy that you have available to you if you want it but without an energy search in the deck too like there'll be times that you like arvin for and you can get the tm evolution and it doesn't matter because you don't have energy in hand yeah i guess that's so you're true. saying that seventh fire could just be an energy search and that might just be better yeah i think so i just i don't know i think i forget what the well I, here we can pull it up on limitless quick 
the draw cow. You can if you oh, just. I don't want to rush you, but we have card drops. Oh, let's go. Oh. Okay, but quickly, if you assume supporters are energies in the uh, the draw calc on limitless, you can see the percent chance of starting with one in hand. And with only seven energies in the first eight cards, you only have a 63% chance of opening energy, which is pretty low, which is why Arceus decks are usually playing like 13 because that brings it up to 86%. Yeah. And then energy search, you can just Arvin for evil energy search, yeah. possibly. A lot of the times, though, you'll be Arvining for a Buddy Boffin, though. Dude, the Sinus Cha is revealed. Sorry. Okay, let's... We're here. We're here. We've done all it. Right. We've been waiting all night. All right, Poltergeist is immune to all damage and effects from opponent's attacks while on the bench. That's so that's a very good. Fantastic ability. 30 HP. That's actually also kind of a cool artwork. I like that. Yeah. Um... And then the Sinus Cha, that is a weird artwork. <laughs> but uh, colorless energy, infusion, retribution. Choose one of your opponent's Pokemon and put two damage counters on that Pokemon for each basic grass energy in your discard pile. Then shuffle all of those energy cards back into the deck. And then for grass colorless, Macha Splash does 120 and heal 30 damage from each of your Pokemon. Huh. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say it. That doesn't seem very good. That doesn't seem very good. (laughs) Dang, grass. Grass screwed over again. But I do, I think I found the Japanese website. And I can bring it up here. And reload it. So we can at least start taking a look at all the artworks, even if we don't know exactly what the cards do. Dude, we could, were could you we guys, were so uh, close. In the Discord, Pulch, you guys so too. had a sick ability. Oh yeah, here Austin, I'll throw it in. Thank you. The Pulch, you guys did have a sick ability. They just couldn't yeah, follow uh, through. I, and when I was reading the uh, the infusion retribution attack, and I was like, okay, like there's something there, and then you shuffle all of this stuff back into your deck, and I'm like, you lost me. I don't know if this is the right site, actually, to be honest with you. It looks right. It looks right, but it, I'm not finding the new cards. Maybe Poke Beach has them up already, because they're usually pretty quick. Yes, there it is. All right. Poke Beach coming through big time. Oh, they don't have the card artworks, though, up until they're translated. They'll, they, they'll put the card arts before the translations go up probably just still working on it well let's see if we can find them in here on this website this has to be the right website the logo looks the same from what Twan tweeted okay what do you give the what do you give the the uh gosh what's it called the sinister ex out of five. Oh man is the site down again uh i I give it one out of five. I give it a one out of five. I sure. mean, I'll give it a one out of five too. Yeah, two hundred and forty HP is pretty low for a stage one. Uh, one hundred and twenty damage doesn't even KO Hazard with weakness. <laughs> That's my benchmark for a grass attacker. Yeah, does it one shot a Charizard EX? Yeah. If the answer is no, then yeah. I mean, I guess like. Yeah, you're playing against Chi and Pao and they get one Fridgey down, you can like get it, but that's that's it. If you're not KOing Chi and Pao's. Yeah. Man, I mean to like a, put damage counters on the board is interesting, but yeah, it's not good. It's not good. Huh. Alright, let's see. Jack, just to let you know, the other, uh, the the Poltegeist does not evolve into the Sinistra. They're they're like they're like regional forms. Oh, that's a bummer. All 
I really wish I read Japanese right now. I know. So we have just those two so far. Oh, dude. Okay, hold on. We see. I see some new arts. They got uh, Hisuian Growlithe and the Terra Greninja alt art. The Terra Greninja alt art looks pretty. Are sick. you seeing that on Poke Beach or where? Yeah, Poke Beach. It's on like the. T it's like right under the the Applin Diplin Hydrapple like arts at the top. Yo, that Greninja goes crazy. It's pretty good. It looks like its first attack does 170 for one water, which is pretty good. Dude, what were you just saying, Austin, about the <laughs> about yeah, the, the Garchomp? It did, it did 160 for one. This one does 170 for one. 170 for one. <laughs> Dude, I believe, that artwork boys, goes I believe. hard. That's a oh, the parent alt art? People are going to love that, even though that card sucks. The, the dude, you, oh, dude! There. Wait, wait, wait! You see, yeah, you see the Growlithe, and it yeah. matches the Growlithe art. That's sick. That's very cool, actually. Oh, wow. what? That's super cool. That's so cool. That Growlithe art is great. Yeah. And then that, yeah, the parent art definitely completes it. That's super cool. That's. I yeah, can't that's get over this Greninja though, fan. dude. That looks wild. Dude, that's one of the best looking Terra arts we've had. Yeah, a hundred percent. It's right up there with the uh, the Zard from like Paldean Fates for me. Okay, we have a Greninja EX translation. Oh, okay. Ooh, let's go. All right. All right. So it's a Terra for water. Or wait, hold on. Just kidding. Never mind. I'm totally lying. I saw it on Poke Beach. Nope, I got it no, on no, Twan's it's on, Twitter. It's on Twan's Twitter. Yeah. Oh, wait, it's on Twitter now? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Water, Ninja Blade for 170. You may search your deck for any one card and put it into your hand. Oh, my gosh. Good. Oh, my gosh. I'm, I'm Austin seeing the Austin called it, dude. He's seen the That's future. That's insane. And then for Water, Colorless, Colorless, discard two energy from this Pokemon. This attack does 120 to two of your opponent's Pokemon. Dude. Oh, they brought back Rapid Strike Urshifu. <laughs> That's just what Rapid Strike Urshifu with freaking Boomerang energy. That's crazy. Yeah, that's what Boomerang energy is for. That's what for. I knew it was going to combo with something. This is it. This it is combos just like... with both Greninjas in the format. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's pretty, pretty good. good. Dude, 120, 120? Dude, 120, 120 just takes out Bavarils. Takes out two Bavarils. See ya, Bibs. And it doesn't do and 120 plus, active 20, and 120 to the bench. It does 120, 120 no, anywhere. No, it's just like anywhere. Rabbit Strike. That's so sick. Except this is even better because didn't the Rabbit Strike or she require you to discard all energy? Yep. Yes, it did. This now one's just this discard, really two. discard two. Wow. And, th and the first attack is just like straight up really good. It's super good. Dude, throw a 1-1 one, one line into your Champ Pow deck. And... Yeah, and now... You just body Maridon. Does the Froki have <laughs> is is it gonna have seventy HP or less? I would bet a hundred percent. Yes, hundred percent. Yeah, it probably two, does. 60 does the Frogadier have a cool ability? That could be relevant if it does. All right, let's check. Poke it's always Beach. relevant. I Oops. I hope it does. This is one of my biggest complaints. Is that Ooh, hold on, more we of these stage reveal. twos don't have interesting stage ones on Twitter. Two. On Twitter. They specs are the coolest things. Okay. Hyper Aroma. Search your deck for up to so three to stage scary. one evolution Pokemon. Reveal them and put them into your hand. Then shuffle your Dude, deck. Dude, if it was three like, evolution, like non Roblox evolution Pokemon, Lugio would have dropped the Master would... Ball immediately. Yeah. Okay. What, what, okay. what is this good for then? Because. Probably it's going to have something to do with the Frogadier. That's my guess. Okay. That would make sense. But also the the upper energy is pretty decent, dude. That's insane for Matang. This is insane for Matang. It's super good for Guardi. Yeah, this is what yeah, Guardi plays over the cape. This is, this is what Guardi plays Guardi over the plays cape. Guardi definitely, definitely sure. plays this yeah. over the cape. Yeah, that's you crazy. That's crazy. I like they they called it aroma too. They love like evolution aroma, Let's see. evolution yeah. incense, well, capture aroma. Play it. Goldango, dude, yeah, I, that's what's so frustrating this. is that Goldango has to play Prime Catcher, but this yeah. would be so cracked in Goldango. It would be. What other, like, is there other, like, stage one EXs that are, like, kind of good or, like, could be good? I don't know. I mean, you just, like, I don't know. 
in any deck that's playing like the barrel you just ha immediately have double the barrel established that's pretty good that's like pretty good yeah double the barrel is pretty decent oh dude hold on the dunsparce you just get three dunsparces out and then you get three duh dunsparces out and then you draw yeah. 12 you <laughs> draw, draw, nine, I mean. draw nine wait yeah. a minute yeah, Tron nine. But I I do think yeah. So far the best nine. the best is the curly is. Yeah, sure. finding the curly is. That was what like I was talking to Michael a lot about this, and I was like, dude, he because he really wants to make guarding work, Michael Slusky, and I was like, dude, I don't know, like it just sucks finding curly is so much that yeah. you have to do some crazy stuff to find curly. Now you don't. Now you just Arvid for yeah. three curly is. Now you just Arvid for three curly is, and you don't hate. I mean, you'd like to still be able to play the cape but there's still like the other capes <laughs> that are still yeah, extremely for sure. powerful so yeah and you save so you much ball search with just this one card i feel like for the yeah tail. yeah this makes you so much more consistent feels yeah, horrible when you deal. prize it though yeah it <laughs> yeah feels so bad when you prize it <laughs> i mean you still probably play one evo right like tm evo yeah, I, I think you still maybe... Probably, yeah. Because when you go second, you want to just get him out that way. Yeah. And then you can just, like, grab the other two with it. But this definitely makes a big difference. And, yeah, depending on what the uh, what Middle Frog does, yeah, you know, this could be... Dude, if Middle Frog is Drizzile's ability... <laughs> I'd lose my mind. I could see it. They've given. I feel like they've given the Greninja line like really good abilities before. I mean, that, was like frog, yeah, that was the original. That was the original step. That's true. Yeah. Water duplicates. Yeah. I'm trying to think of other stage ones. I mean, we're gonna get more as we go on. Yeah. I have to say, aside from Neo Upper Energy, I think every A spec is good. Neo Upper Energy, like. Okay, maybe maybe it'll find home, but like, I can't imagine any deck being like, okay, I'm gonna be able to attack one time with just this one energy, and then it's gone. Right. Okay, I'm looking on Pokey Beach. The Froki and the Frogadier, neither of them have abilities. Dang. Oh, that's so dumb. But the Froki has an attack for one water energy. That doesn't do any damage and it has a lot of text, so it could do something cool. I don't know. Okay, fair enough. So maybe that'll be decent. Do they have all the card arts up? Oh, I had scrolled past them. I'm dumb. Tangrowth has an ability. Looks like it takes thirty less damage. <laughs> Busted. Um, let's see. This is a Zapdos that does one ninety. What cards are we seeing in here that like weren't revealed yet? Are there any EXs? Enamorous, bro. There's an Enamorous. You think it's going to be good? No. <laughs> With those lips? I don't know. <laughs> are there any trainers that look interesting? Oh, oh, they just announced on Twan's Twitter there's a support of Lucian just got translated. Sweet. That was the one I was just looking at. Each player shuffles their hand and puts it on the bottom of their deck. If either player put any cards on the bottom of their deck in this way, each player then flips a coin. If heads, that player draws six cards. If tails, they draw three. No way, dude. What? They got the gambler Iono. <laughs> oh, man. That's crazy. How salty would you be <laughs> if you got Lucian and then your opponent that played Lucian flips heads and you flip tails? I'd be pretty mad. Imagine if you're the one who played Lucian, though, and you <laughs> flip tails and your opponent flips heads. <laughs> I'd be pretty bad. There is. This card seems not good. No. But maybe it'll get this played. Is a I don't much know. worse Iono. Yeah. Much worse Iono. It, it does what Judge does worse. That's wacky. I mean, I guess technically, if you're playing the numbers game, Lucian is technically a draw 4.5 cards so there is that <laughs> that's crazy though that's a funny <laughs> one this is a great meme card 
It is a great. It is a good card. meme card. But that's all the trainers for the set. We've now seen all the trainers. Oh really? Mm-hmm. And, but there's a few Pokemon with abilities that could be interesting. Um, there's a floor. Or wait, what is this thing called? The Flower Fairy Pokemon. Florges. Florges. Is it Florges? Yeah. 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 That's got an ability. And that one actually usually has pretty interesting abilities. And then there's the Enamorous, which is definitely going to be cracked. Are we expecting another special energy or no? I thought we were. No, I think it's the Ace Spec special energy that'll be oh, in the Ogre okay. Pond set. Yeah. Ooh, this Eevee alt art goes hard, too. That's cool. Huh. You love to see it when they give special treatment to Eevee. Dude, that Evolutions deck from Diamond Pearl, that was a cool deck. That was a cool deck. They need to bring back the Energy Evolution Eevee. Definitely. Yeah, I think that would be really cool. Where is Lucian from? Jack's asking. What game is Lucian from? I'm pretty sure it is Gen 5 Elite 4. He is Gen 4 Elite 4. Oh, Gen 4 Elite yeah, 4? Psychic really? Trainer. I don't remember that. I don't remember him at all, dude. I, I was a Gen 4 head. Dude, what the heck? That's crazy. What that number crazy. in the Elite Four was he? He had to have been like one of the middle ones that you kind of forget. Oh, see, Dang. now that I see that artwork, I kind of remember him a little bit now. Was he like three? Because it starts with Bertha. And then does it get it go into Flint from there? I, I thought Flint was the last Bertha. one before. I, I do not one. remember Lucian. Okay, now we're taking a pit stop and looking at Sinnoh Elite 4. <laughs> it starts with Aaron, dude. Aaron the bug type trainer. Oh, that's, that's right. right. And then Bertha, and then Flint, and Lucian is number four. Oh, he's the fourth one? Yeah. That's right. His Bronzong is kind of annoying. Yeah. Remember when they remade Gen 4 and it was, like, terrible? I do remember that. <laughs> I was so excited for the Underground, and they've ruined the Underground. Dude, I know. But Legends Arceus was very good, so. Yeah. Legends Arceus is the last Pokemon game I've been able to complete. You hated Scarlet and Violet. I I have not. I haven't even gotten the first badge, bro. Like, Man. Yeah. Like maybe I'll pick it up again at some point, but it was there were elements of that game where it was just like it seemed so cool, but the visual elements are a big hiccup for me. Yeah. That's fair. I didn't have as many of the glitches as other people had, so I got pretty lucky in that regard. And I also don't play a ton of other video games, honestly. So, like, I know that there's other video games that look way better than Pokemon games, but I don't play them, so it doesn't really bother me. So it doesn't bother you, Dude, yeah. I didn't have any issues with, like, uh, performance or, like, bugs or anything. And also, by the time I had finished the Pokédex... I had found like twenty shinies. I I don't know what it was, That's but I just crazy. found so many shinies, like just on my like initial playthrough. Dude, I didn't I, find like any, but I also was like, I definitely missed a ton because there's so many shinies that look identical to their normal yeah. color. You you know that first area you go through? It's that's got like the Toronto tarantula, tarantulas yeah, and yeah. stuff. I that I found a shiny within. Five minutes of starting the game because I found a shiny tarantula there. That's crazy. That's wild. I know, I know. It was insane. Also, tarantula. I love that little guy. He's bouncing. He's weird. You gonna play some spy ops control? I don't know. Uh, maybe. I don't know about that one. Did I ever tell you guys about the my moment of insanity when I thought that like. I don't remember when this was. It was sometime when grass seemed okay. And I thought Spide Ops was going to be kind of a cool thing in like a Lost Zone deck. And I don't know why I thought that. Lost Box Spide Ops? <laughs> yeah. Because Lost Box was good. And I was like, well, they don't want to see a Spide Ops because they're trying to retreat out of their comfies. 
and then it was probably like one shouting zards but <laughs> that's pretty funny it, yeah it's not good. it's like that fever dream you had when you bought four alt art for <laughs> 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 yeah that's true yeah that was that was when we were in indie and i think um palky of v-star got revealed <laughs> yeah and i had said i'm no. going to bed and i sh- i walked into the kitchen 15 minutes later like in a like a half asleep stupor i said i just bought four <laughs> four full art carbonyl v's because that card's gonna be busted in <laughs> palkia <laughs> it's gonna be so good in palkia <laughs> Oh, that's too funny. And it was. It was busted. That's how Palkia beat Duraludon. Yeah. That's true. Caleb bonded me with that card at Bunker once when we were testing. And I was like, man, that card is so good. And then it was okay. <clears throat> but then, two years later, I played it in my deck. But you weren't for trying to attack. do more damage for yeah. each damage, Connor. <laughs> so this is not Pokemon related at all. But I was at the grocery store today. And there's this thing called Biscoff Crunchy Cookie Butter. And holy shit. <laughs> it is so good. Yeah. It is so good. Just wanted to say that. Is it dangerous? Is anyone... It is dangerous. Oh, man. That Very sounds really dangerous. good. But it is really good. Especially if you like Biscoff cookies, man. Like Biscoff cookies are pretty good. Throw it on I'm a little a bit of toast. Throw it on a little Lorna Dune cookie. Delicious. That's sweet. I made, so... I made homemade beef jerky for the first time today. I got like a dehydrator. Oh, yeah. So good. Dude, I, that my up, my oh, plan man. you know i'm already the meat stick guy at regionals yeah. dude i am gonna i'm about to make so much beef jerky before we go to london that it's not even gonna be funny i might get dude, stopped right. at the airport for bringing too much cow into the country of <laughs> england <laughs> <laughs> we have a new ting Lu. Okay. okay all right fighting for uh fighting energy uh, it does 30 damage, and if there's a stadium card in play, discard that stadium, and this attack deals 30 damage to each of your opponent's benched Pokemon. That's not Ooh. good. That's kind of interesting, though. Yeah, if there was, like, Path of the Peak, this card would be better, I think. It's just, like, if you have this card in play, what stadium are you playing to make your opponent bump? There's just, I just, there yeah. isn't really one. Well, I, I guess I'm thinking of this more in the sense that, like, this really nicely just sets up a bunch of damage on board to be able to manipulate with Alakazam and uh, be able to make the Tinglu EX its ability work. I could see this. And yeah, that's true. I guess it does oh, it pair does with the Tinglu EX. With EX. I, forgot, I forgot Tinglu EX existed. I was yeah. thinking. Because Ancient Box plays the Coridon and they're already playing Fighting Energy, that this could be kind of a cool first attacker that softens up everything on your opponent's board at the start of the game. So you need less Ancient cards in your discard pile later in the game to like hit them with the Roaring Moon. So if you use this, your opponent's uh, Charizards are only at 300 HP instead of 330, and you need a lot less to KO them. Which is kind of interesting because you're already playing the Earthen Vessels, you're already playing the Fighting Energy. Yeah, I could see that too. Cool. And you're playing like three artisans, and that's how you find your basic Pokemon. So you could like feasibly have a turn one where you get this and have a stadium oh, play. And... It can be your stadium. I read it wrong. I read it as it had to be your opponent's stadium. Yeah, no. yeah, it's not. Okay, like that's third. that's much better than if it can be yeah. your stadium. Yeah, but I think that's kind of interesting. It'd be like a one of. In a yeah, two, but not not terrible. It's definitely not amazing. But uh, but there we have it. I th- I wouldn't mind seeing um, I don't know some kind of spread cards come back into the format a little bit. We we don't see a whole lot mm-hmm. of that. 
and the spread that does tend to exist isn't usually powerful enough like it doesn't ramp up damage quickly enough spread would need to be at least 30 spread now too to be good like the flying flip top of coco that only did 20 i don't think that would be good enough these days no probably not we have a hisuian arcanine in typical hisuian arcanine fashion it has an attack for no energy pride fangs for 30 damage and if your bench pokemon have any damage counters on him this attack does 90 more damage uh, Dotrio. And fighting, fighting colorless, searing flame, uh, does 90 damage. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now burned. So it seems like if you were to play this card, it would be pretty easy to get a turn to, uh, a turn to 120. Yeah. With uh, it's weakness Salvatore, on iron hands. With Salvatore and like something like Gapejaw, you could yeah. even get like a turn one 120. I don't think that's that relevant, but uh something to think about i guess yeah yeah you can play with the dodrio i think the dodrio just has better partners though yeah whenever i see an attack that says you have to have damage counters on one of your bench pokemon i just think of dodrio Dodrio. i mean anything that can ko and iron hands for no energy is kind of cool but that's true it does ko iron hands that is not irrelevant Imagine imagine going second against the Turbo Iron Hands deck and you flip the script on him and you hit him with the turn one Salvatore 120 KO, 240 KO. Right. Interesting. Hmm. I wish, I kind of wish that this, uh, I kind of wish it was like it did 90 more damage and left him with a burn or something like that too. Yeah, 90, 90 for three, 90 and burn for three is pretty... That's pretty pretty poor. Pretty <laughs> Greninja does 170 for one. <laughs> the other Greninja does exactly. 90 and 90 for three. Yeah. Greninja is just a stacked card, dude. They love Greninja. They always make Greninja sick. Yeah. That's true. Pokemon Company loves Greninja. Remember Maybe the other Hisuian I'm Arcanine? I'm a that, lover too, so I that, get it. But yeah, no, it is a very cool Pokemon. They definitely do have favorites in the TCG, though, like Gardevoir and Greninja. You were theory crafting that other Arcanine. Yeah, you, you the, had the deck built, the Grant deck. Man, you know, you look back on it now and you think, why did I ever think that a a deck that said I had to attack? With no cards left in my hand would be a good deck. <laughs> Dude, you had the Venusaur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you get the Venusaur. Until it gets uh, boss trapped by Sableye. Peyton yeah. says Boomerang Energy plus Neo Upper Energy on Greninja. Neo yeah. Upper on Greninja is cool. I just feel like there's better ways to do it because yeah because then you if you do that you're still discarding the neo Neo upper upper. yeah because it's discard two energy right yep it seems like you got baxcalibur yeah you have baxcalibur you have double turbo energy even and then you're not hitting 120 120 but it's water colorless colorless wasn't it Uh, it's water colorless colorless yeah. yeah 100 to 100 is not bad, I guess. 100 to 100 isn't bad on a 320 HP Pokemon. 310 HP Pokemon. Yeah. But yeah, you want to be, you obviously want to be hitting the the barrels, but the fact that you can use double turbo is cool. Psychic type weakness just got significantly better. It used to be one of the worst weaknesses to have, I think. And now it's like pretty okay to be weak to psychic, I think. Yeah, Guardi yeah. is very dead. Mew, and to be honest on. with you, I like this the A spec is very good for the curly is. It is. It's super That good. is true. But I just don't know if the I just don't know if the attackers you have in Guardi anymore are good enough. Like they're to have to have the tools and then all the energy you need. Maybe this is good enough though, because it really ups the consistency. I think it'll probably be, I mean, it'll definitely be playable. As to whether it's going to be better than a C tier deck, I don't know for sure. But yeah, I would. This definitely makes the deck very playable. Hundred percent. 
it's it is much better than it was going to be or will yeah. be until this card comes out uh right. we got right. eevee with an ascension eevee. attack not very good i don't even what's the coolest eevee evolution right now is there any cool ones there's some know. new ones in the set that maybe okay. will get revealed there's a new halucha for fighting fighting prize counter does 50 plus if you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent this stack this attack does 90 more damage so 140 for two fighting on a 70 hp basic seems bad it's yeah. actually really funny because at naic jack and i were trying to find a fighting attacker that did basically exactly that <laughs> For what? For Maridon? For Lost Box. But yeah, yeah. For, uh, to, against Maridon. Against Maridon, against Arceus. Yeah, it's not, it's not terrible. I think, yeah, I, I don't know. Anytime I see 130 or 140 damage on a single prizer, that always makes me look at it twice. But I'm not entirely sure where that is going to be placed or if it will ever really be utilized. Yeah, and the the stipulation is a little awkward, I guess. Like you have to have the more prize cards left, which it's not terrible, but can be kind of awkward, I guess. It's like useless when you're ahead. But can find it with the buddy poffin. Yo, wait! More cards were revealed from the next set too. Wait, really? Yeah, there's like a. I don't know where people are seeing these. It's on Pokeka Book. Okay. Dude, what the heck? Is this about to be the most cracked release night? Dude, Kieran and Carmine ca supporter cards. Uh, Kieran? Does he do something with Ogrepa? I don't know. Let's see. Um, I don't know where people are finding these. Oh, here they are. Oh, they got the the Monkey Dory, the Fezendipity. Where are you um, seeing these? Here, I'm sending you... I'll send it in the Discord. Um, the Monkey Dory, Fezendipity, and Okidogi all have abilities, which look to read the same amount of the same, or it looks to be something to do if they have a dark energy attached to them, something happens to them. Because they're all dark type. Monkey Dory is psychic, Pheasantipity's fairy, and Okidogi's fighting. And then Maybe they're dual type. Dude, Kieran definitely interacts with Ogre Pond for sure. Or oh yeah. There's something to do with EXs and Vs. It's like a, it's one of those choice supporters. Yeah. Okay. And there's. And then there's like a scoop up net. <laughs> It can't oh be. My it can't something be. It's not scoop of that. It's something with grass Pokemon. Uh, I'll be right back. I'm gonna use the restroom. Dude, what if you can scoop up net the ogre, the grass ogre? That'd be wild. Okay, wait. We have translations. I think for some of these. Let me see. Um, this is just from people messaging in Discord. I'll wait for Max to get back. Okay. See if we have any more stuff from Tuan. All right, Max. I think we have some preliminary translations for Kieran and Carmine. Okay, okay. So it Let's looks like it. Carmine is a supporter that may, may be used on your first turn going first. Discard your hand, draw five. But if it can only be used on your first turn going first, it's bad. But if it can be used after that, too, I think that might be good. 
that's it looks like it has two effects right i think the first line is probably if it is your first turn if if this is your if you go first you may use this card in your first turn discard your hand draw five cards is what i'm guessing the first and then the second line is but the second line has something to do with EXs and Vs and like a plus 30 kind of thing. Sorry, I was looking at Carmine. I was looking at Carmine. Oh, oh okay, okay. Yeah. And then Kieran, oh. Kieran is either switch. You may you choose one of the two. The first one is you can switch one of your Pokemon, or you may do 30 more damage to your opponent's Pokemon V or EX. Ooh. Pretty, I mean, Leon was, Leon saw play. Leon saw play, and this is like an additional switching effect. I don't, I mean, I see, like, does Charizard play this to do 30 more damage? It could. And it's also and a switching effect? effect it's mm -hmm. pretty decent. I could see it. I want to know what this net does. Yeah. Oh, on Pokey Beach, we have some other translations. For the new... Like Tangrowth, like the Tangrowth. Okay. Uh, for Crimson Haze. Let me pull that up. Tangrowth. This Pokemon takes 30 less damage from attacks. And then Loom over 150 minus damage. This attack does 10 less damage for each damage counter on this Pokemon. Can't one shot Charizard. Okay. Why do just Pokemon never they're never able to do it? Okay, we have a Leafeon. Leaflet blessing for one colorless. You may attach a basic grass energy card from your hand to one of your bench Pokemon. If you attached energy in this to a Pokemon this way, heal all damage from that Pokemon. And then for grass colorless, solar beam for 70. Pretty bad. Um, the Vulpix and Ninetales we might have seen already, but they're not very good. The Meg Cargo we've seen already. Maybe the Torkoal's new. Ramming Shell, 30 damage during your opponent's next turn. This Pokemon takes 30 less damage from attacks. Not very good. Chiyu. New Chiyu. Chiyu, yeah. Ground Melt, 60 plus damage. If a stadium is in play, this does 120. Then discard the stadium. Yeah. It's okay. That's all the further we've gotten. Let's check Twitters. I want to know what this scoop up net does. Yeah. I gotta say, I, I am a believer in this Greninja. I think it can do something. Yeah, it should, the downside to it being a fighting type, the fighting type is good because you can one shot like Iron Hands and stuff. Uh, the downside is you can't hear it for it. Yeah. But you can hear it for Ultra Ball. Which that's at least something. Yeah, that's that's true. You have the candy in hand. It may be one of the rare decks that plays quad Greninja EX. Just so you can find it. Just sure. so you find it easier, yeah. Um, could be. I think that this scoop up net has something to do with. I think it's look at the sev top seven cards of your deck and choose up to two Pokemon and a basic energy you find there and put them into your hand. I mean, that would be decent. That That's is pretty what, decent. That is the rough translation I think I can get out of <laughs> Google. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try the Carmine just to make sure we can get like a better idea of that.
Dang it. This card can only be used on the first player's turn. So it can only be used on the first turn of the game. It's like Squawk Ability, but a support. Uh, that sucks. Uh, that could actually be good if you could use it on the other turns, too. <laughs> Where did you see that? It's it's oh, what the translation. It yeah. Uh, okay. Got a few new cards up on Pokey Beach. I had a Florges on Twan's Twitter. Ooh, let's check out the Florges first. It's got an ability. So Florges, ability, tempting invitation. Once during your turn, you may flip a coin. If head switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with their active Pokemon, and the new active Pokemon is now confused. Dude, that's Loopy Lasso. <laughs> what yeah, what was seen... Loopy Lasso on? Uh, uh, the Pogo like Venusaur. Venusaur. Yeah. I not that it's good, but one time I played against the Loopy Lasso deck on ladder and they had like three freaking Venusaurs down and it was really annoying because if you're flipping three coins every turn, you're probably getting a heads. Yeah. That's true. But also getting three Venusaurs down. Yeah, not easy. That's okay, we true. got Corefish. Snip, snip for 40 damage. <laughs> flip two coins. For each heads, discard a card from your opponent's deck. Okay. All right. And Rampaging Hammer, Water, Water, Colorless, 180. During your next turn, this Pokemon can't attack. Okay. And then a Glaceon, Deep Chill, 30 damage. At the end of your opponent's next turn, put nine damage counters on the defending Pokemon. And then Icicle Missile for Water, Colorless. Oh, dude, the Froakie's sick. Froakie is the Froakie's sick. Search your oh deck my gosh, dude! Broke. It's Sobble. It's Sobble. <laughs> dude, Frogadier actually his attack is somewhat relevant for paralyze. Couple coin of heads paralyze. And so the Froki panic situation is pretty decent. Dude, the Froki's a sick claymation art. Yeah. And oh, it yeah, can it. be found with Buddy Poffin. As Buddy Poffin as for it, you can Buddy Poffin say. for what for a Froki or two Froki, and then. Flock for the other two. That's he's cool, I guess. I, I don't know. Yeah. I guess maybe you don't really want four Froakie out, but no, you buddy Poffin, you buddy Poffin for Pidgeot, Baxcalibur, Pidgeot. or the Fridgey Bax, yeah, or yeah, Pidgeot, or something like that. That'd be sick, dude. This could be like a Pidgeot, a Pidgeot Baxcalibur. Uh, that's a lot of stage twos. Never mind. Yeah, <laughs> no, I think you have to choose Baxcalibur or Pidgeot. Yeah. Probably got to be the next caliber because otherwise, how are you powering? You're gonna have to play with barrels though. It's just gonna be like Champau with more steps, isn't it? Yeah. But you have so much, so much more you can do. Yeah, that's true. Champau having 220 can be kind of a detriment to it. So having to get through a 310 HP, it's pretty good. So Tuan has said that's basically all the good cards are the interesting cards from SV5A, which means that there's, like, we saw all the good cards sort of already um, from Crimson Haze, and now he's going on to translate the um, the cards from SV6, which is like the Kirin and Carmine that we were just looking at. Um, okay. But we can keep scrolling through here. Yeah. I mean, it's not surprising that there's not a ton more good cards. We already got the Ursaluna. Um, we already got the Aspex, the the Unfair Stamp, um, the Greninja. Like, there's a lot of good stuff. Enhanced Hammer. Yeah. There is a lot of good stuff in this set for how small of a set it is. It's like 66 cards or something like that. Yeah, no, this set's um, like kind of crazy. What do you think the text on the Zapdos is for 190? just that's discard all energy I mean, probably that's a lot of damage i want to see the the hydrapple i want to see a hydrapple card Yeah.
Yeah, it's discard all energy. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, 190, Classy that's Zapdos. huge. Like, that's big. Yeah, but you're not Flaffy anymore. Well, yeah, but... But, like, even the GLC implications of this card. Is yeah. Kind of nutty. Yeah, it could be very good in GLC. 190 is a lot. I mean, there's not a lot in GLC that's living 190. Not even in grass. All right. Interesting stuff. I'm going to refresh Tuan's Twitter. But I think we're kind of winding down here on Definitely. new stuff. Yeah. I'm going to try to see if I can get some Google Translate translations of the the Loyal 3. For some reason, keeps translating them to Latin first. <laughs> Obviously. Okay, this is not the actual translation for Monkey Dory. <laughs> but Google Translate says <laughs> that the text on the attack is it does Psychic Cuddleless for 60 damage and crush your opponent's battle Pokemon. <laughs> <It> crush. <laughs> that's, probably, that's probably what, paralysis? I don't know. Crush your opponent. Confuse, maybe? Or confused. Because he's like a psychic type. I don't know. That's wild. Um, but it looks like the ability is something to do with moving damage counters around on your opponent's board, which is always okay. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And the Pheasant if this Pokemon has energy attached to it, flip a coin. Oh my! Oh, it's just if if this Pokemon has Dark type energy attached to it, flip a coin. When you're attacked, if heads, you take no damage. Pretty cool. That's okay. like, that's a pretty decent ability. Yeah. Yeah. Very RNG based, but there will be some good PDCG live videos made with that card, though. And it's probably what thirty times the number of energy attached to you and the defending Pokemon, or something like that. Yeah, it's thirty times the amount of energy attached to just the Pheasantipity, I think. The Fighting type dude seems like it's something that if he has Dark type energy on him dude. or something, he gains like a hundred HP. He's crazy. He gains a hundred HP and his attacks do a hundred more damage. So he's a two hundred and thirty HP, one hundred and seventy attacking fighting Pokemon if you have a, fight, a dark energy attached to him. So it's basically... So for cost, fighting, fighting, dark, it's 170. Yeah. And it has two, 230 basic, HP. Yeah, with 230 HP. That's pretty good. That's that's interesting. There's not, like, a lot of great f ways to accelerate that, but, like, that's actually... Holy... Sh you just played in Lost Box, right? Oh, for yeah, sure. Yeah, you can play in Lost Box, yeah. Uh, also, so that supporter you're saying that can be used on your first turn, the translation I'm seeing on Twitter from someone else is that it can be used by the player who goes first on the first turn. Not that no I shot, that. dude. That card is so good if it can be used on other turns. Um, I guess we'll have to wait for the official Tuan translation. But he for did sure. put up the non-EX Sinistra. And okay. for a grass, put four damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like. Um, and then for another grass, Matcha All Out, 70 times, discard up to three grass energy cards from your Pokemon and play this attack does 70 damage for each card discarded in this way. So it can one-shot well, as One shot now. in Charizard. Let's go. <laughs> there it is, boys. I mean, Big Lizard TM busted. You know, dude, here we go. You got the... You got the Sinistra, and you you got the Teal Mask Ogre Pond Engine to get your energies into play. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. And you get to draw a card. You go attach one, draw one, attach one, draw one, attach one, draw one, and then attach for turn. You're doing 210 right there. Pretty sick. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. 
not necessarily great, but it's interesting. It's interesting. I do like the artwork, though. That's pretty cool. I can't wait to see what the English at a name is. They gotta do something. Cool it's gotta be. Gotcha. Yeah, there's gotta be a matcha gotcha somewhere. <laughs> matcha gotcha. I wonder if Poke Beach knows that. I mean, they do know. They're geniuses. They haven't posted that these other cards have been uh, revealed. I have to say. Um, just looking at the pack arts from Twilight Masquerade, because I'm back on the, the Twilight Masquerade mm. um, section of this. Like, the Ursa Luna one, that playmat is going to be so sick. Yeah, it's going to be super cool. Oh, yeah. Also, I'm very excited for the Temporal Forces playmats, like, with the Raging Neck and the Iron Crown and all that. They're, like, really clean pack arts, so. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm I'm excited, for sure. Yeah, Dude, Ogre Pond's been actually. trending all day on Twitter. People love Ogre, Ogre Pond. Pond. I don't know how I feel about Ogre Pond. You got to play the DLC, dude. You'll love Ogre Pond. Really? Yeah. Is it like a whimsical Pokemon? Like, is it like a lovable kind of like silly kind of Pokemon, or is it different than that? It's a little different than that. Okay. It's like a misunderstood Pokemon. Okay. Okay, uh, Tuan uh, translated the bug catching set. Is that what we thought it was? Yeah, look at the top yeah. seven cards of your deck. You may choose up to two in any combination of grass, Pokemon, and basic grass energy cards you find there. Reveal them and put them into your hand, then shuffle the other cards back into your deck. I mean, that seems... Pretty reasonable. That seems pretty good for Ogre Pond. I mean... yeah. You're, you need to find grass energies to use the ability. You need to find grass, you know, your ogre ponds themselves. So that seems fine. It looks like, yeah, that's a pretty nice piece of grass support just in general. Like, pretty decent card. This card's definitely going in my Espathra Matang deck. <laughs> I forgot about that. I keep forgetting about us Bathra, and then I pull up City League results, and it's getting, like, top eights, and I'm like, okay. Yeah, if Charizard's really sick, then, I mean, uh, is Pathra, like, Ottawa's Charizard? Yeah, I don't know how Charizard wins that matchup. They have to get very lucky. Yeah. Oh, Green man. Green Zard's got to put in a lot of work. The EV IR? I didn't see that earlier. That's pretty good. Oh, though. yeah. I like that one of them's playing with like a Hydreigon plush. Yeah, that's pretty cute. Do you think Hydrapple is going to be good? No, In but I hope it is. <laughs> it's going to be stage two, so the answer is yeah, probably no. <laughs> probably not. I don't know. I. Is it going to be dragon type? I would assume so, just based on the other two cards. Yeah. Yeah. But we won't get Hydrapple until August, I don't think. Okay. Because it was if not introduced type... in the first DLC. It was introduced in the second DLC. Okay, if they it's dragon hammers. type, I don't think it'll be great. For Psychic Colorless Colorless, if you have a Pokemon with the same type as one of your opponent's Pokemon in play, this attack does 120 more damage, so 80 plus 120. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Those so, lips are doing something. Yeah. They are doing something. Tuan translated the Carmine. You may play this card even if you go first and it is your first turn, so you can play it. Okay, that card is pretty good. Am I crazy yeah, to think that that nope, card is very that's good? Pretty good. It's very good, dude. You can squawk ability in Carmine turn one. That seems pretty good. Seems pretty good. Yeah, that very, very good. that is. I mean, drawing five isn't a lot, but when with every deck playing like its own draw support now, it feels like. 
Right. You don't care as about drawing as many cards off of your supporters as you do care about just setting up. And yeah. this Yeah. Wow. That, it seems like really good actually. Like when I'm thinking about it. That's pretty good. That's pretty dang good. Damn, that full art's gonna be expensive. That full art will be expensive, yeah. <laughs> That's like a That's like at least a four out of five for me. Yeah. It's possibly yeah. a five out of five. Yeah. Like that's really good. I agree with you. I think one of the interesting things, thinking just having been prepping for EUIC is so like Champau and Goldengo don't really play draw supporters all that much. Like they're just trying to set up and then draw cards with their abilities. And Charizard plays Iono because it just kind of needs to set up and it also wants to disrupt late game, but really it's playing Arvin. And so all these currently, like it's crazy. We have research and Iono in the format and there's a ton of decks that like are barely, are, aren't playing a four, four of those, which is probably if you, if you showed us those two cards two years ago and we'd all, we'd be like, Oh, every deck plays a four, four, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Um, right. And so I think draw supporters have to be very strong to warrant being played in decks now, just because we have so many different ways of building decks and so much consistency from abilities from Pokemon that we don't really need to research that much anymore. There's certain decks that will want to obviously like very turbo decks. Um, but this being able to be played turn one, even though it only draws five, I think is very cool yeah i think that this will i could absolutely see a world where this overtakes research just almost straight up like one for one in a lot of decks um i mean research is obviously incredibly powerful seeing two more cards is incredibly good but also not being able to play the game because you bricked and went first also is terrible and that happens, that can happen a decent amount. So the fact that this card can fix some of that seems very yeah. strong to me. The thing that the thing that worries about me about it for a, a few different things is like, again, if you think about, uh, I think this immediately goes in Lugia, probably. Although in Lugia, you're like, okay, I don't want to discard a bunch of special energy turn one. So that's scary. If you put it in a Zard deck, you're like, oh, what if I open like Rare Candy Pidgeot? I don't know. You, you, but I don't have the Buddy Poffins, and so I'm digging, but I'm having to discard all these things. I think there's something very interesting about this card, but also limiting. Where Champau doesn't really want to play this because you can't, you can't really be discarding Superior Energy Retrievals turn one. Um. So it, I feel like this has to go in like really turbo decks that don't have important resources that they need to save for later in the game. I guess something like yeah. Moon would love to see this Moon, if it if Moon it wanted to go first. That right now. Yeah. yeah. I guess my my counterpoint is that just because you can play this on your first turn doesn't mean that you should, right? Like sometimes, yeah, you do just have a hand where you don't want to get rid of it, and conversely, if you were, you know, if this was a say professor's research you wouldn't be able to play it anyway so that's kind of my thought yeah that's fair it's something you can play on turn one but don't have to right yeah um tuan officially translated the kirin as well so it's choose one switch your active pokemon with one of your benched pokemon or during this turn your opponent your pokemon's attacks do 30 more damage to your opponent's active pokemon ex or active pokemon v so, yeah, I think that's just a good card. Like Max had said earlier, Leon saw play. Um, yeah. And this is just Leon, but better because it has just that option yeah. of switching. Yeah, I think also something to maybe keep in mind, too, is uh, with Max Belt in the format, Max Belt plus Kieran, that's something <laughs> that could just like, that could push a threshold to. Being able to take KOs on something. 
Yeah, plus eighty. Plus eighty is yeah. very good. Um, I mean, I'm gonna bring it back to Blood Moon Arsaluna. That's three twenty from the Blood Moon Arsaluna's attack. <laughs> that's yeah, a lot. That's, that's stupid numbers right there. That's basically Okoing any Pokemon EX except or stage two Pokemon EX except Charizard. Yeah. Yeah, that's really that's really interesting. That big lizard they gave it the they gave it the super size. Yeah. For HP. Ain't no Garganackle though. No. What is that? Is that three forty? Three forty. <laughs> that's that's big. That is very big. big. Very big. Very big. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's about it for card reveals tonight, but I think that was a very good batch. In yeah. my opinion. Well, we still have the we, Oh, we the do we're three. waiting on the monkeys, yeah. The monkey dory pheasantipity and uh whatchamacallit. But I think yeah, I think that's the last couple ones. Let's see if Pokey Beach has anything on them yet. No. <clears throat> we do have. Yeah, that's. I I was not Pokey expecting Beach. them to do SV six cards tonight. That's pretty cool. Yeah, they went crazy today, man. They were like, "Let's show them everything. Man. Let's just do all of it." Now I'm just excited for May, man. It's not even... We don't even have Temporal Forces. I know. We don't even have crazy. Temporal Forces out yet. We're ready for the next set already. We did get confirmation on the Enamorous uh, from Poke Beach. Uh, if you have a Pokemon with the same type as one of your opponent's Pokemon in play, it does plus 120 for 200. Um... We have confirmation on the new Belly Bolt. Flip a coin if Ed's paralyzed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Still a very good set, I think, overall. But Oh, yeah. Um, Always a couple of junkers in there. Absolutely. I forgot GLC was a format for a little bit when these cards were all first revealed. And when people were freaking out about the Applin and Diplin, I was like, these are not good cards. But then I I forgot that GLC was a thing. <laughs> right. Oh, he got the Monkey Dory. The Monkey Dory's up. Let's monkey go. Monkey Dory. Uh, Adrenaline Brain is the ability once during your turn, if this Pokemon has any darkness energy attached to it, you may move up to three damage counters from one of your Pokemon to one of your opponent's Pokemon. Oh. Dude, is that sick? Agatha's that's, music I hear? Dude, that's so sick. That's an sick. Agatha, baby. That's an Agatha, but better. You can just do that once per turn? Yeah. That's kind of cool. That's, that's nutty. Very cool. Dude, that's so cool. I'm a big fan of that card. That's maybe one of my favorites revealed tonight. A lot of damage manipulation. Yeah. That is I don't know if you guys realize just how much damage manipulation that is. That is so crazy. Yeah, that I mean that ramps up pretty pretty quick over over a couple turns can let you reach a little bit on some on some numbers. Pretty cool. Man, cuz that right there could be an easy plus 60 on something and then you can attack into it again like very interesting yeah not cool. very powerful in a formats where everything's being one shot but <clears throat> see if any other cards are on Pokey Beach? It looks like there's still a couple. Got the Propobas still, which hasn't been translated. I don't think it's going to do too much. And there's a Snorlax that <laughs> has an attack for five colorless that does 160. That's pretty funny. For five colorless? Dude, 
They get the Snorlax out here doing five energy 160, and then we get the Blood Moon Ursaluna doing 240 for like at most five energy. <laughs> right. Not even the same ball game. Dude, for the Greninja, you can just Palkia V start a Froakie before you evolve into the Greninja. You oh, can you do totally that. Can. That's not bad at all. <laughs> you totally can. Why wouldn't you be able to do that, right? Yeah, that that makes sense. I don't know. I could. I actually really could see that you don't even need um, the what's the card stage two dude that accelerates water. Why can't I think of his name right now? Max Tired. Caliber. Max Caliber. You probably don't even need probably don't even need Max Caliber if you're running stuff like Palkia. Like if you ran Palkia and you ran the upper energy. You're probably just chilling. We got yeah. the pheasant lippity. Adrenaline pheromones. If this Pokemon has any darkness energy attached to it, and if any damage done to this Pokemon by attacks, so flip a coin of head to prevent that damage. And then, yeah. Uh, psychic energy does 30 times the number of energy on this Pokemon. Okay. It's like... Not terrible in Guardi, right? Yeah. Suppose not. You don't get to use the ability, but you conversely get to use well you do thirty times actually it's kinda of bad. Be what, thirty times six? Kind of at most. Including a manual attachment. Yeah, the HP boosting tools. Yeah, with the HP boosting tools, it's okay. And I mean, you, uh, you there's what's stopping you from playing like one darkness energy or one like like luminous or something. That's true. And then maybe you just straight up don't die. That's like okay. Yeah, that could be pretty decent. Yeah, I suppose if you put a um, if you put a hero's cape on it. Or the uh, um, the two prize cape for a hundred extra HP, then thirty times is pretty good. Yeah. And then we're expecting this last one to be plus 100 HP, plus 100 damage. I think that's what Tom was saying. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's definitely good for Lost Box. There you go. It's up. Yeah, that's like sick. Yeah, that's very cool. And again, fighting type, so hitting uh, Iron Hands for weakness. You Mirage Gate weakness. to this and Blood Mooners Luna for weakness. Yeah, that's true too. Jeez. Dude, you know what else? Uh, the Crisis Punch does 380. Crisis Punch. Oh my gosh. That's. <laughs> Oh my That's gosh, absurd. That's so wild. That's so good. I mean, that that's card's like that card's like really good. Yeah. yeah, that's so some kind of like really fighting dark boss box. Yeah, you play fighting. I mean, Sableye is just bad now. I'm sorry. Like, that's one thing that I can't say. It is Sableye doesn't do anything in that deck anymore? It feels like because of Jirachi. And yeah. so you just cut the psychic energies. You play fighting. 
dark, maybe lightning if you want to play hands and water. Hands, yeah. That's pretty reasonable. And I mean, this ha having 230 HP, like depending on what you're going up against, like in a Lost Box Mirror, they have to use a two-prizer to knock this out. Yeah. And it's doing 170, so you're knocking out basically anything in their deck. Yeah, that's... I actually think this card's pretty good. Dude, and then yeah, you I hit him with the too. Lana's whatever. Yeah, you dude. You get it back. You oh. get it back, you do it again. That's what the Lana's is for. Dude, Dude, the Crisis, crisis Punch for 380 is wild. That's really good. Like, <laughs> you just kill a Zard to win the game. <laughs> that's so goofy. That is just so goofy. Man. That is super interesting. Wow. Yeah, I think there's definitely something there. Definitely something there. Okay, well. Took a little longer than we were expecting. It was a successful stream. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah thank For you sure. all who tuned in tonight. I think this was... Yeah, like you said, very successful. We got to see even more than we expected with the Carmine and the Kirin and this Okie Doge. I think um, not only excited for EUIC at this point with Temporal Forces coming out, but now we're even getting like a crazy sneak peek at May. And um, actually, I, I just want to point out something quick. If I can pull up my calendar here, which apparently my computer's not going to let me do. Uh, we are. Uh, this set for us comes out on May 24th, which means that as of today, uh, we are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, only eight weeks away from pre releases for this set. <laughs> well, hold, hold the phone. We're that eight, seems crazy. We are eight weeks away from pre releases for uh, <laughs> Twilight Masquerade. And we are not even out of the pre-release section of Temporal Forces. Dude, that's, that's so great. crazy because we were in the Paradox Rift format for so long. <laughs> it's been so long. Yeah, they need to stop this stupid holiday crap in January and yeah. just release an actual set in January. <laughs> wow. But now we get Twilight Masquerade in eight weeks. So we are currently like preparing our butts off for EOIC. <laughs> and basically by the time EOIC ends, we got to be yeah. ready for this one. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. That's wild. That is super wild. Pretty cool. Uh, wait, is Indy? Awesome. Is Indy? Yeah. Oh, NAIC is the last tournament of the season. So, yeah, like Indy, LA, Orlando will be playing in the Temporal Forces format while simultaneously having to like be ready for any i see <laughs> wow like immediately because it's in eight, it's in eight weeks yeah i'm excited I'm... this is uh the cards seem cool i am very ready to switch the format up and yeah i'm really excited with the game design and how yeah, they've, they've been doing in things a great direction. um i was yeah. slightly nervous about the paradox pokemon because i don't think any of us went big basics to be ruling the format but i think they did it in a really good way that doesn't make it feel bad um they're fun decks and they're not overpowered at all uh and we we're still seeing things like charizard uh and and set up you know stage two decks doing well so yeah i think yeah i think things are I mean, looking charizard is, very good charizard is basically the only reason the big basics haven't been overrunning the format i feel like yeah yeah i mean it's fair it's fair but I think Guardi Guardi was up there, you know, and we're we're getting some evolution decks. You know, this Greninja could be really good, um, that sort of stuff. So, I think yeah. we're no, we're on track true. for good things to be happening, for sure. Yeah, I'm excited. A lot of these cards look awesome. Definitely, I'm a Greninja believer here. I want to see it. Yeah, man, I agree. Well, I think that uh, probably about does it for us tonight. Uh, but thank you all who tuned in for our three-hour live stream of <laughs> revealing the new cards. But it was a blast doing our first live stream here. Hopefully, we'll be doing this more often. I know we plan to do this for a lot of the set reveals. 
Um, I think it's a lot of fun to just look at the new cards as they come out. Um, and maybe we'll be able to do this and start watching some of like the Japanese streams as well and kind of casting over those and, and watching as they get to play new formats a little bit ahead of us. So yeah, this was a lot of fun and thanks for tuning in.